Hello and welcome to Outlander's Guide to Ladaria, session 68. Hi. One Hello. more to go. Hello. 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 <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Uh, okay, oh. we've uh, we've talked about frogs a whole lot today. Uh, I wonder if there will be any frogs in this session. Mm -hmm. Anna is here, so. I hey, right? Couldn't be me. You're right. Here we are. Here's our table. Here's your here piles of dice piled up for no reason, just to be knocked over. Here's Phoenix. He heard that we're alive, and so he jumped on my lap. I know. Uh, yeah. Okay. So recap, recap time. You guys can see it, but I'm like doing crazy things with the camera. Ah, and I'm pointing at Austin. <laughs> Hello there. Whoops. S. It's hey, me. S. Hi. Hey, S. Hello. It's you. What have you got for us today? Well, uh, Austin doesn't have anything, but Pip has made a special video for his friends Fortis and Alien. Aww. <laughs> Would you like any music for Pip's video? No music. No music. Music has been <clears> banished. <throat> All oh, right. It's movie time. Yeah. Ow. Ow. My goodness, what is this? Yeah. Pip's just telling his friends about their latest escapade. Ready? Ready. Ready! Here yeah. we go. Um, okay. Hi, Fortis. Hi, Alien. Um, I just wanted to share this with you, because uh, something really cool just happened. And, um, if you're getting this, if you're getting this, uh, I'm sending this through dreams. And so <laughs> you, you should be getting this while you sleep. Um, but uh, I'm sitting here in the game room of the tower. And uh, I had to break apart the the dragon chess board in order to do this, but I'm I'm oh, pretty no. sure that Pontifex <laughs> won't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but we were traveling in this uh, this glass castle when we found a dragon chess board, and we weren't really expecting it, and so we weren't sure what was going on. Um, but then like the pieces came to life and they started attacking us. And so we made it up to the middle board and um and like I'm right here. This is, <laughs> this that is a sock on your <laughs> mm -hmm. Um but when we made it up to the middle board all of the pieces started attacking me. And so this one came up and hurt me, and this one came up and hurt me, and this one came up and hurt me. And they were like all up in our in our business. I didn't fall down like that, though. Um, you might be wondering why I've got a dirty sock on my hand. Um, but anyway, I uh, was like, oh, we gotta kill him. And I was like running up and, and attacking them. Um, but then something amazing happened. Um, Professor Pontifex showed up and he looked so much different. Um, he had he had a beard, he had like bags <laughs> under his eyes, and his skin was a different shade of blue. And um, and he was all like, Ah, oh, bah, that is not the how you play dragon chess. This is how you play dragon chess. And then he just, he just freaking threw a fireball at <laughs> Um, so I guess that's how you win dragon chess. Um, <laughs> So if you if you're ever playing dragon chess together, you'll know how that works. Um, and then like it was really easy to kill all the other ones after that. So we'll just um, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take you to the top board. We moved up to the top board. So just one second. Okay, um, here we are on the upper board, and as you can see, things look a little bit different. Um, on this board, we got things like dragons and and flumps, um, which are like air spirits or something. Um, and so we were up against a lot. Like here we, here we are, this is where we came in. And this is, this is Brooke, this is Virian, this is Sunny, this is me, um, this is Pontifex, and this is Tekka. 
um, and tech goes over here, you know, um, just like, you know, wrecking things like he does really cool. Like, um, but still like even with a Tekka on our side, we were up against a lot. Um, but luckily for us, we had a couple of, uh, secret weapons up our sleeve. And the first I'm secret ready. weapon was a fireball. Yes! <laughs> that made sure God. Um, but also, like, I I can summon animals. And so usually what I've been doing throughout this game of dragon chess is I've just been, like, <laughs> dropping a whole bunch of animals. <laughs> and then Virian tells them to hit them really hard, and then they, they do, and then it dies. <laughs> Um, and so that, that was working for a really long time, except then the enemy mage, the enemy wizard was like, pew, 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 and then started like killing off my animals so that they couldn't fight the dragons. And so, so the dragons came in, see, roar, roar, and they killed all the rest of my animals. Um... And so we were like, we were like, what are we gonna do? You know, what are we gonna do? We got all these enemies over here, and like, how are we gonna deal with them? And then uh, Pontifex, you know, Dragon Chess Master is like, oh, well, I have an idea, fireball. <laughs> <laughs> and so then we won. Um, and we were like. All right, and then, you know, Brooke and Sunny are cleaning up the stragglers. Virian shoots a guy, I'm pretty sure. Oh, I get to stab the king. Sorry, Professor. Oh. Um, but yeah, like, get off. Life is good. And, um, but, like, like uh, the professor's cat sees movement upstairs, and... And we're like, we don't know what that is. Or we, is it going to be a, another bad guy? Um, but we see the door open up here. And out comes someone, an elf, who's got his bow trained on us. And we're like, oh no. But the professor recognizes him immediately. And he's like, oh, oh, my friend. Hello. Oh, shit. <laughs> um can't anyway you get the idea they're friends and they see each other um and like i'm like oh it's talix yay my friend who's dead but it's not talix it's talix's dad and they look a lot alike because they both wear really big hats um but yeah we got a lot of questions for him so um oh yeah do you want me to tell you what those questions were hey Hey, Guido, are you playing with the dragon chess pieces again? Oh, no. Um, I, I gotta go. <laughs> Professor, don't fireball me, please. I'm going to fireball you, you stupid piece. <laughs> <laughs> don't tell me who and who not the fireball. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, the first time the pumpkin came in, it was great. The second <laughs> time, so repeat, funny. amazing. And then I was like, it's not going to happen a third time, is it? And it did, and it was great. No one casts Fireball three How many rule of three is? It's the rule of three, yeah. Pumpkin. <laughs> oh, okay. That's not how you play Dragon Chess. This is how you play Dragon Chess. And then he casts a Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Smash a pumpkin on the game board. So if you ever play Dragon Chess, you'll you'll be ready for that move. Yeah, <coughs> that. it's pro level. Oh, that so that funny! Explains how I've been That's losing okay. so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm amazed that you managed to make an entirely combat sessions recap that entertaining. <laughs> oh, thanks. <laughs> Here we go. Here's your inspiration. Thank thank you for. Your service? I don't know why that's where I'm going. Uh, thank you for your recap. Let's see uh, if I can remember where I've put my thing. Oh, the pumpkin's uh -huh. thematic. Happy October. Yeah. Hey, October. Yeah. It's almost spooky. It's, it's been spooky for like two weeks. It's already been pretty spooky. <laughs> yeah, but like...
the spook is escalating. Yeah. Accurate. A rising spook factor. I'm gonna take these boys. Wait. Why is this red? No. What's red? My ball. Why is your ball red? <laughs> what ball? Blue balls. Oh. Very sphinx. <laughs> <laughs> Why was it red? It's been my blue forever. No, no it's not. If, if, if you say so. It's been like this forever. I don't remember it. It, it was this. I, be, I believe you there. Uh, how, red. how red? Why red? But I'm allergic. Um, what was I do? Oh, I was starting the session, huh? <laughs> find the, find the you were marveling at the marsh cows. That's what you were doing. Oh, yeah. Vanguard. Okay. All right. Let us resume where we left off. And that is with the entrance of Arian Moyer on this floor of the glass tower. There's a moment where the battle almost comes to a sudden standstill. Everybody, minus the chess pieces, turning towards him. I think Pontifex was running towards uh, yeah, Arin? He was, he was running towards yeah. them at, at the, his fastest pace, which is still comically long and will take longer than two turns. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in the time that it takes Pontifex to... Um, <laughs> to get all the way up to, to Aaron. He like holds up a hand. He says, uh, one um, moment, let me stop this. And he just, he snaps his fingers uh, he twice and he says, checkmate. And the pieces stop moving. And the battle is officially over at this moment. Want to fix you? Just make it up uh, to Aaron. Uh. Huh, I'm coming! Hold on! Huh, huh. <laughs> Here, turn one. <laughs> huh. Huh, that's a, hold on! <laughs> Dash. <laughs> Oh, I'm so close! <laughs> Aaron has like put away the bow that he was holding. It's like on, it's on, on his back now. He crosses his arms. Uh, yeah, Pontifex is gonna uh, walk up to, to his old friend and just uh, like toss his, his staff and his, his astrolabe onto the ground and just like old man hug. <laughs> Hello! Oh, it's... I was so happy to see these other people, and now I've completely forgotten. Hello. <laughs> it's good to see you again, Professor. Uh, yeah, been... I thought you were dead. I... Why? Uh, because this shit is dangerous out here, and you were alone. I, I was alone for, like, a week, and look at me. <laughs> I appreciate your concern for me. It's been, uh, what, over 30 years since the last time we saw each other? Oh, uh, only that few. I thought it was more, but uh, I stopped counting. Uh, but uh, I, uh, yes, I believe you. 30, 30 years. So what brings you and uh, um, these people you brought with you here to destroy this set of dragon chests. Uh, I, don't, I don't precisely know what brought them to the dragon chest, but is it not obvious why I am here? Were you seeking me out? I was wanting to play dragon chess. Ah. Should have known. But, uh, uh, hey, everyone, this is, uh, this is Talix, is dead. This is, uh, Aaron, this is, uh, old friend. A good, good person. Uh, he's, he's okay at Dragon Chess. 
Hip waves. Better than Are across me. the room. You can approach. <coughs> Better than me? Don't no, bite. never. Of course not. That, yeah. That's insane. <laughs> I just uh, didn't want to interrupt a reunion. Oh, I, all right. This is uh, this is Virian. Uh, when uh, Talix was sucked beneath the waves of the ocean, and uh, we got her in exchange. You know. I'm sorry. Yes, me too. Uh, you're no, great at it. making first impressions for me. <laughs> Did you just say Talix? Uh, yes, your boy. You know the whole reason I'm I'm in Ludaria. I didn't know either of you were in Ludaria. Yeah, well, uh, hello. You fell into the sea. Uh, no, uh, we were in uh, we were in Jamuel's old tower. Uh, just assume we know more than you think we do. Uh, we were in Jamuel's <laughs> old tower, uh, and then one of those doors opened, and clearly this door led to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, and a demon or a devil or something of both uh, came through uh, and decided this should be someone else. And so he grabbed Talix, uh, sucked him through the door into the bottom of the sea, uh, and then vomited out this elf instead uh, and then shut the door. And we couldn't get to it because of the torrent of water. Uh, and so far she is fine, but uh, Talix is presumed. Uh, underwater. Orion uh, maintains uh, a an almost entirely unchanged expression throughout all this. Um, yeah, you got to that Pontifex, point you know a lot him. faster than I did. <laughs> <laughs> you know him well enough to be able to like read him and you know that he's not doubting you despite the Craziness that the, the that you were saying. Um, he just remains quiet for a few seconds, seemingly just pondering over everything, and then he gestures at the circus behind him, and he says, "I think we should take a seat. Follow me." And you begins them, heading gang. upstairs. More stairs. Um, back here, the the pieces stopped moving, uh, as I mentioned, but the ones that are broken, they have started to sh uh, to shift. Um, pieces roll around, gears assemble themselves with other gears, and the dragon chest pieces are essentially starting the process of reassemble together, slowly undoing the destruction. Uh, take your minis, because I'm going to take you out of here. Oh, I missed the cow. <laughs> She's a fun sentence. <laughs> uh, okay. <clears throat> We actually don't have to like place the minis or, around or anywhere because I I don't have a, like an upper floor map with furniture and such. But uh, the the floor above, <clears throat> now that the dragon chest part of the tower is over, uh, you can see that it's just a, a standard living space, complete with an office, a bedroom where like Aaron closes the door to it, so you just <clears throat> briefly glance at it before he does. Uh, and you can still see through the wall uh, where furniture doesn't block it. Um, it takes you to essentially a living room. Uh, there's a couple of couches, not enough for everybody to sit down, but Aaron begins to just drag a few chairs around. Um, the uh, Noah is <clears throat> like staying back, staying a bit closer to like the, the entrance to the living room. 
um, and seems not quite at ease. Uh, all of you also would notice just right away, just uh, um, leaning against a wall here in the living room um, is uh, a staff. And you recognize it. It's a wooden one. It looks a little bit too small for Arin. It's covered in runes of arcane nature. It has a purple gemstone on top. You've been looking for this this whole time, and it's just there. Jamil stuff. Once most of you are seated, uh, Arin asks for all of your names. If you if you'll give them, he repeats them back to you, making like a v visible effort to uh, to memorize them. When he gets to Noah, um, and he asks for for his name, <clears throat> um. That's, yeah, that's fine, Austin. Uh, when he gets to know when he asks for his name, uh, um, Noah is immediately, like, uh, I don't know, I guess slightly confrontational, where he says, I think you have something of mine. And Arian seems to give it, like, a thought, and he shakes his head and he says, I, I don't recognize you. I've been open to meet one of your kind and talk to you for a long time, but you say I have something of yours. Um, and Noah still standing, kind of bringing like his fingers together, he says, did you take a gem from, from here, from right outside the castle? Red? In a box? You can all see the, rec the recognition in Arian's eyes as Noah spoke, uh, speaks. And uh, he says, I didn't know it belonged to anyone. Noah very simply says, I, I want it back. You guys can feel free to interrupt at any point, right? But <laughs> uh, Arin thinks about it for, for a few seconds and says, I have found that gem about perhaps almost a year ago. I did think it might have belonged to someone, so I checked back on it over and over, and it was always there. I actually only took it about a month ago. No one says, hey, 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 does it matter when you took it? It's mine. I want it back. Arin glances at the rest of you briefly, but doesn't really seem to wait for your input or want your input. Uh, he seems to have a few questions that he just puts aside for now. And he says, I'll go get it. No, actually seems a bit surprised at this. He, he, he goes, wait, really? And Arin... Just like that. <laughs> and Arin, just addressing all of you now, says, I'll be right back. And he begins to head downstairs. And you can see through the glass walls as he goes across the chessboard on the floor below and then further down. And at that point, the carpet mostly obscures where he's going. So you have a few minutes on your own in this room that besides the fact that the glass, like the walls and the floor and the ceiling are made of glass and most of the furniture is made of stone, it actually feels... Pretty plurnan? It's the most plurnan thing uh, that, that you've seen in a while, save for the interior of Arian's tower itself. Mm. Okay, mm -hmm. so just uh, to, to explain a little bit more about who this individual is, uh, this is uh, Arin, and this is Talex's dad, uh, or for Virin, uh, this is the father of the man uh, of whom's fate you're the substitute for. Uh, he <laughs> is the creator and owner of the uh, tower that we all like to use and live in uh, for for so long now. 
uh, he is a friend uh, of my parents, apparently, according to a dream from Talix, and he is a longtime friend of mine. Uh, and perhaps the main reason for which I am in Ladaria and lived in the City of the Elves in the first place. Uh, he's a, a very uh, reputable and trustworthy man, in my opinion, and I, I would uh, hope that you all would give him the same vouch of trust that you would to me. I, I don't say this very lightly on account of having no family, but if there was anyone, it would be him. Then, of course. I mean, I don't think trust is an issue. I just have a whole lot of questions about... All right. I guess my point is to, uh, to to treat him as if a great friend. Uh, no need for for formality or, or whatever. Uh, if you have the questions, just bless them. Uh, he's stuff. more curious <laughs> than I am, so he loves a good inquisition. What, what did I just hear Pip say? I found the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Got Pip, it. Yeah. Pip has just picked it up. <laughs> nice. It doesn't feel what? that heavy. It's pretty light. What's he picking up? I got the staff. Jamil stuff. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh yeah, that whole thing. Oh, I guess I have to uh, get mine. <laughs> Poppy's gonna <laughs> scoop up his staff and his astrolabe. <laughs> Five minutes later, when he gets back up the stairs. <laughs> Pip. Is it like? Yeah. Jamil and Aaron. They seem to know each other yeah we should not just take we should learn why it is here in the first place yeah i'll hold on to it while we figure that out hmm. you know gotta keep it safe Deca, there are thieves around here <laughs> <laughs> So, what are we doing about this crystal? What do you mean, what are we doing? If Aaron is this clever and knowledgeable, surely he knows what this crystal is. Um, we... You is... first, you first. Uh, <laughs> we could ask him about it. That's probably the best way to approach it. You know, I hate to break it to you, but I think he's already used it. I mean, I, I don't I don't think even Granny could make those chess pieces down there do that and like be destroyed and then rebuilt again. That's oh. crazy powerful magic. Yeah, they, uh, don't make a mistake. Aaron is not a joke. He was noteworthy before he came to Ladaria 30 years ago, so. Oh. Teacher. Hmm. Hmm. Is Aaron the sort of person that would wield great magic to create a game like that? Uh, ask yourself, am I the type of person to use great <laughs> magic to create the game? I understand. Thank you. Uh, but uh, yes, in, in less cryptic terms, absolutely. This is 100% something that Arden would do. He was uh, as much of a Dragon Chess fanatic as me. We actually met uh, over Dragon Chess, if I recall. A long long time ago. I'd have to check my memory banks. <laughs> <laughs> like the chronicles of Pontifex I've been writing for 400 <laughs> years. We, we can speculate all, all we'd like, but why not 
I think we should just be up front. Just ask him if he knows what it is, if he has used it, if he does know. That way we don't have to guess. Yeah, precisely. Yeah. Uh, I would say that Arn is more like me than he is not, so uh, questions and answers are, are likely his forte at the moment. This would be around the time when you would uh, be seeing him in the floor below, crossing the chessboard again, where... Uh, it looks like the pieces will take a few hours to finish rebuilding themselves, so, like, the process has just begun, and he, like, carefully steps around where there's a bunch of debris, and finally makes it all the way back into the living room, holding a red gemstone. It, it looks beautifully cut. Not a scratch on it. Um, just polished to mirror-like perfection. Uh, Noah's eyes widen a little bit when he sees it. <clears throat> he extends a hand. Just very expectedly, but... Aaron pauses. So what's the deal with this? And Noah doesn't seem particularly too happy that the gem isn't in his hands already. Uh, <laughs> tenses up a little bit, and then he says, It's mine. I got it. A while back. I put it away. I'm back for it. It... It has magic in it. Allegedly. It does. Do Alright, pause a few, for a few more seconds, and then he's approaching Noah. He holds out yeah, his gem. Just a moment. And he pulls let it me, back. Let me do my old man business. <laughs> <laughs> Noah's doing the thing where he's like waving his arm, so he's just a few inches away from the gem. <laughs> the crabby hands, give me, give me, give me. Yeah. Because uh, I already sus checked uh, Noah. Um, I would like to uh, <laughs> use my feature to instantly cast, uh, to in instantly ritual cast the tech magic. And uh, I'm going to give oh. this thing a good wizardly, clerically once over. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, okay. Oh, yeah. wait. You cast. Hold on. Maybe uh -huh. this is, uh -huh. this is a bit better. Uh, -huh. uh, I'll do the same thing, but instead of on detect magic, let's do it on identify. That makes more sense. Okay. Identify does require uh, physical contact. So you have, like, do you want to get up and like get your hands on the, on the gem first? Uh, the f Aaron's holding it. Uh huh. Right. Yeah. Yep. There you go. The, uh, scientific method. It's perfectly safe. <laughs> so That's fine. The professor's gonna. <laughs> boop. That's fine. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you essentially you say hold up and you stand up and you walk up to Ara and you put your hand on the gem and Noah seems upset that someone else got to it first <laughs> and then like you straight up like speak magical words and uh, wave your yep. your uh, staff around it, it takes uh one minute with mm -hmm. my feature uh so like imagine the entire time just Noah being like what are you doing what is this you're not using it in my place are you you're not breaking your word you said you would give it to me <laughs> like a minute of that um Shut up, the... I'm busy. I never gave you any word. Shut <laughs> up. That's true. <laughs> you weren't there. <laughs> uh, yeah, at the end of uh, the uh, of your spell, you uh, would obtain the, the properties for it. Uh, so, uh, identify it. Unlike detect magic, it doesn't tell you like, the type of magic, right? It just tells yeah, it doesn't tell me the type of magic. Okay. Um, the the gem that your hand uh, is resting upon, you sense a an incredible kind of magic within it. It's perhaps comparable. No, uh, take remove the perhaps. It is comparable to the time when you had uh, that one wand in your hands, mm -hmm. and you tried to. Um, your magic tried to reach the depths of the of the energy within the wand, and you couldn't even see all of it. You could see some of its potential, 
but not where it could lead. You could see some of mm -hmm. its effects, but not all of them. And here, it's a similar kind of feeling. You can sense how powerful this is. It's almost breathtaking. But the magic that is registering in your senses, it feels really alien. It feels deeply unfamiliar. And it feels like beyond what you're capable of comprehending. All you're getting from your casting is just the amount of power inside. Nothing else. Um, am I getting any spells that are affecting the item? Not from the item itself. Like, with, are there any effects that are placed onto the item? With confidence, you feel like there aren't. Not, just, okay. not that you're not detecting them, but there are not. Okay. Woof. Okay. Uh, yep, that, that lines up. That is uh, the gem he was talking about. That's a doozy. I can't actually tell you what it does. Just that it's a lot. It is similar oh. to that old wand of mine. <laughs> Our England sit down with a gem. He does like a slight shake of the head and he says, I don't know what it does either. Oh, Try right. to figure it out. I should have just asked. He probably did this a long time ago. Orin glances back towards Noah, and he states, I don't mean to steal from any Thedarian. I'm a researcher. I'm an archaeologist. I wouldn't touch something that belongs to someone. I do apologize for taking this from you. And he holds out his arm, and Noah this time kind of snatches the gem really quickly. And he pauses, looks at it, and like the tension in his body just is released. His shoulders droop a little bit and he, he smiles and uh, he says, finally. <laughs> wow. Okay. Okay. All right. Here we go. And he takes a deep breath and then he glances at, at your group. And... Uh, smiles widely and oh, says God. I I want a home I, I want a home with a beautiful view in uh, the place where I where I got my first kiss uh, and it needs to be big and and I, I want a dog everyone hold on let them cook <laughs> <laughs> Uh, two floors, three, three floors, and, and beautiful carpets. Um, yeah, that's uh, that's it. That's my boy. Moments pass, seconds pass, and he holds up the other hand, the one that isn't holding the, gems, the, the gemstone, and in that hand, he's holding a key ring. Kind of a big one, with like those kind of keys that are going like padlocks, just really big. And he looks at it, eyes wide and mouth open in shock and then, and then smiling again and he says okay okay all right that was that wasn't too difficult uh, and he looks back at your group again and he says you uh you've let my heart go and you have reunited my body with it and and you did all that without Knowing that there would be anything in it for you. There's um, a lot of people who have a lot of harsh words for uh, you outsiders, but I, I think you guys are alright. And he... Um, he makes like the closest person to him, which we're going to say is... Uh, uh, 
Uh, Brook. And he holds out to the gem towards him. Brook takes it. Look well, at it. Um, enjoy whatever it is you guys want with it. Uh, Wait. Get your. All of this. The heart ripping, the waiting, the the getting the heart back, traversing through the tower, all of this was for a house. I've never had one. My sweet summer child. How long have you waited? Too long. It no wasn't meant to last that long. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it worked. Uh, no, oh, no, I'm not questioning the results. Uh, uh, congratulations and, and uh, much yeah, well, gusto to you. But uh... Had a couple other things going on. Some people I had to escape who I trust that by now would be gone or would have forgotten me so it, it all worked out well I'm happy for you if not flabbergasted though what I just witnessed <laughs> I don't know how I doubted you in the slightest that you oh, could have possibly for... wanted for greater things I, I I want to go now. I want to go see my house. Um, doubtful that we'll ever come across each other again unless you guys come to visit me in the world of dreams. Oh, the house isn't he? Oh, okay, that is okay. That's making more sense now. <laughs> I see. I'm getting the feeling that. Maybe don't discount that entirely. If I can manage. Someday. Okay, well, you... You might be my first guest. <laughs> I I will have food. Yeah, so much of it. Yeah, I don't say this often, but I actually like you. I've only known you for a handful of minutes, but... Uh... <laughs> I don't know. I respect the man who, who relishes in mundanity. Nothing mundane about a big house? That likely the most mundane thing that there is. <laughs> so, and the fact that you'd believe it to be more is even more uh, heartwarming. I like you. You are a good, uh, a good, uh, I don't know how you are morally, but uh, overall, I, I like the cut of your jib, they say. But before you leave, um, Noah. I, um. Yeah? There is one thing I might ask in return for helping you with this. Small thing. Noah does squint a bit suspiciously at this, but he does say, go on. It's, um. As you said, the visit you in the world of dreams. Can you possibly give me the kindergarten version of explaining how that all works? The traversing between the two. He, he has his expression like he... Like, he's trying to figure out if there is something else beneath your question, like some other kind of hidden meaning. Like, that's... Like, the question itself is a little bit too simple, too easy. And he doesn't really seem to get to any conclusion. So he just scratches the back of his head. Uh, Ara, in the meanwhile, has also taken a seat, and he's been listening very carefully to the exchange between you guys. Um, and Noah eventually nods and says, Okay, well, it 
it does work differently for me than it does for everybody else. And I didn't even think that outsiders could see dreams travel through dreams like we do up until somewhat recently. But um, for my kind, it's second nature. Many centuries ago, we were from this world and eventually we moved to the other one. We're deeply connected to both and that makes it quite easy, both when we sleep and when we're awake, to travel between them. For anyone else, it generally takes magic or the guidance of somebody like me or one of our creatures, one of our animals. Your best bet would be to find a Catella willing to guide you. They can take you into the world of dreams and they can take you anywhere you need to go. I find the what now? The... Hold on. Let me show you. He reaches with uh, uh, one end over one of his shoulders and he taps something like a few inches higher up from uh, uh, where his shoulder actually is. And then he, he almost seems to grab something and pull it away. And he, he holds out his arm as if to show you. And during that motion, something materializes in his hand. And it's a colorful moth. Much like Vina, much like uh, the moth that uh, Nui had. A different pattern on its wings that matches the colors uh, that Noah has on his skin. Um, and this moth just flaps its wings very slowly, almost as if to show them off to you. And Noah says, this is a Catella. Generally, you won't be seeing them in this world, but sometimes they can be spotted. And if you do, or if you were to see one in your dreams, you can ask them for help. That is genuinely useful information. We have encountered them before. Every Taradov is bound to a Catella. We don't really seek them out, they come to us. They live for as long as we live. I'll, um, certainly keep that in mind. Thank you. I hope that answered your question. It didn't, but I appreciate it anyway. Um, I think I'll have to do more looking. I know it's hard to explain something that you just know how to do inherently. I'm just having trouble wrapping my mind around all this. This has been very life-shattering news, and I'm still processing it, honestly. You spot in the corner of your eye, Arin, just raising an eyebrow. No one just seems content to have, uh, um, to have answered the question. Glances around, kind of um, almost worriedly, and says, Is there anything else that you guys need of me? If not. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. Okay, all right. Well, <sighs> I can be patient. I have waited years for this. I can wait a few more minutes. What, what is it? keeping you from something? I really want to go home, yes, but that's this is fine. This is fine. <laughs> what can I do for you? Home like Plorina? It just looks at oh. part effects like... <laughs> no, 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 this is Noah speaking. Oh, I was so <laughs> very confused. <laughs> <laughs> What are you talking about? Uh, fuck you! <laughs> what are you, you old shit? No, 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 no. no. Right, has been quiet throughout this exchange. He he looks very interested. Like he's not taking notes, but Pontifex knows that like he has really good, really good memory, and he's obviously like committing every 
board of this conversation to memory. Uh, uh, anyways, Pip nodded at Noah. Yeah. Pip just hops up and, and he fishes in his backpack and pulls out... Uh, it's a wooden skull with beads on it that the one who stares carved and made. And he hands it out to Noah. Uh, and and uh, as he does so, Squeak in rat form crawls along Pip's arm and hops onto Noah and uh, goes right up to his ear. And Pip's voice just whispers through Squeak's uh, mouth as he says, A toy for your dog. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> Okay, um, <laughs> he hesitantly takes the skull, looks at it, and looks at the rat on his shoulder. And looking at the rat, he says, uh, thanks. I'm sure he or she will love it. Week travels back. Uh, who else had something for Noah? Who is now holding a wooden skull? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we should have... Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, Aaron will be the one to ask Noah a question. And he simply, like, briefly says, I would like to visit you. Where exactly is your house? If, um... Could you point it out on a map? Uh, and he says, Yeah? Yeah, sure. Aris stands up, comes back just a moment later, he just goes in the room and just into the living room. Uh, with a map of Ladaria. Uh, at least, uh, at first glance, it's a map of Ladaria, and then you all do a double take. This map has much more landscape on it than any uh, map in you guys' possession. Upgrade! Hey, yo. Oh, the suspense. Whoa! Whoa. Help. So we're not halfway done. No. <laughs> we are here. Yeah. We've done this much. Holy crap. <laughs> oh, yeah, I man. expected more landmass, like a, a good amount to the northeast. I didn't expect a whole nother giant, like, continent. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Yeah, I expected like this much. Okay. Well, yeah. we know where we're crossing the ocean. That's <laughs> not that far. Look at that. It's just like a mile or so. Or 40. Oh. 40 miles. You say that we're hexagon? like. Yeah. Easy. Like it's 80 miles? No, wait. Uncovered or something it's like 40 that. 40 miles. 40 miles? <laughs> Easy. Yeah, 40 miles per hexagon. These, these hexagons are twice the size of the previous ones, which were 20 miles. We'll get tech a home in no time. If we were to <laughs> number these regions going deeper into Ladaria for no real reason, but just for fun, let's say let's let's label them from one to twenty. We're at about eight. <laughs> <laughs> the other twelve out of twenty is is this. On a completely arbitrary scale. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An arbitrary <laughs> scale of one to twenty. <laughs> no points here. Oh, that's like a nine or a ten. <laughs> Wait, you said it is in the world of dreams. But both uh, both uh, Arin and Noah pause for a moment, and then Noah like realizing that he has to explain this. He says, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, right, right, right. The world of dreams is very similar to the waking world. There." version the different versions of each other the landscape is the same for the most uh -huh. part 
so the house is there but uh if we were to go there there would be no house you get unless it unless we're dreaming mm -hmm. right well give it enough time and eventually there will be a house also on zedarat i don't know how long it will take though that this world zedarat Uh -huh. Where you, you guys are awake and where I'm sleeping, that's what it's called. The, it has been referred to as the waking world for a, a time. Uh, Z Z Z Red. Is that a Ladarian language for something? Uh, it's Ezenfair. It's an Ezenfair word. It just stands for... Well, it stands for daytime or day. Got it. Sorry, the only uh, Ladarian languages I know are Draconic and Krell, so mm. forgive me. And Tech can confirm that the translation is accurate. Zedaret, huh? What uh, to you is the world of dreams and what to me is the waking world. That's a rule. So, what is the name for the Dream place. Oh, I rule. I see. Ah. Well, that's a, a interesting little nugget of information that probably isn't that useful, but I like it all the same. Um, happy to help. Orin just rolls up the map. Um and says, I don't mean to keep you any longer. Noah clutching uh, the key ring says, okay, all right, don't freak out. I'm just gonna, just gonna go. Maybe I'll see you again someday. I'm off. And he takes a step, just kind of seemingly towards you instead of towards the exit, towards at least the, st the stairs. Um, his body vanishing before your eyes. The moth, the uh, katala that's with him, the katala that's with him, um, takes flight, flaps its wings a few times, and then also vanishes. I think the professor assumed he was walking towards him for a farewell handshake, and so was happily starting to hold out his hand <laughs> handshake. And the dude vanishes, so the professor kind of awkwardly moves his hand over and, like, scratches his other arm nonchalantly like he didn't just get ghosted. There's the, it's with that, of course. I hope this castle's here in the dream world, otherwise he's going to have a very long first step. <laughs> 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 Don't worry, I right instantly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a serious monkey paw. Congratulations, you're a homo. <laughs> Sunny elbows Brooke and says, Well, what are you going to wish for? Uh, poof. I haven't really thought about that. I I mean Ooh ooh, I... hand it over, hand it over. I've got a wish. Wait. He waits for a second and then gives it to her. Sunny takes the gem and says Um uh, like the, the, like she seems about to say something and then she shrugs and ends it back and says, Well, I wished to be alive again, but I already got that. Yeah, that's what I meant. It's not really anything else left to wish for right now. Hmm, we could go big. World peace. Think that could work? He raises an eyebrow. Hmm. Don't think it's that easy. <sighs> oh well. Should have known. But that is a good question. What are we going to do with this rock? I know he gave it to me, but... As far as mm -hmm. we understand, it can create things. Not necessarily grant wishes. That is fair. 
Arin, speaking up. Is that what it does? Uh, yes, apparently it is a, a scale of a, a dragon of creation or something, Cloud Weaver. And it holds a modicum of its power to create things. And once it does so enough, uh, it then must slumber and recharge for a time. He seems to have used a portion of it to make a house and a dog. <laughs> but uh, presumably you uh, use it to create anything. If I understand the lore that I gathered, it, it is used to create the land as well. The mountains and uh, all, all of that stuff. Aaron nods at this part and he says, that's supposedly what Cloudweaver did. Made All the right. entire so landscape in the exists. clouds where the dragons live. Heard of it. Right. So. Hmm. I mean, I have something I would like to do, but it is admittedly petty and vindictive. <laughs> as I am known to be. Is it petty and vindictive towards someone who deserves it? Absolutely. Then I have no objections. I feel like if it's petty, it's not really deserved, but go on, I guess. It Details. is deserved to me. I guess it isn't petty. It, it, honestly, it's a slight overreaction. Uh, it, like, I don't know, you stepped on my foot, so I blasted you with a fireball. That's sort of the, the vibe <laughs> that I'm getting. Uh, but I have no intentions of apologizing or holding back, so... But uh, that Lord of the Sky schmuck wronged me in ways that no one has before. So I wish to crush him in ways that no one has before. And I, it wouldn't it be silly if his if his little floating islands no one can get to were suddenly attached to the floor. <laughs> if only us measly landwalkers could just simply walk up to it. Wouldn't that be a bitch? Wouldn't you be less special if your high, high table isn't so high anymore? Professor, I wish to know the details. Later, though. Mm. If you don't mind, now that our Itarodu friend is gone, I need you to elaborate on what happened to Talix. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't see most of it, so... Perhaps uh, Virian here has a better idea of where he is and what is happening. You have about as much as I do. Um, then downstairs, door opened up, spit me out from the ocean into their tower. The devil I, who dropped me off. Took Talix and left. I don't know what he might have wanted with him. I don't know anything other than what I've shared with you. Uh, there is one other thing that I recall uh, that the demon or the devil seemed to be familiar with our friend Squeak and vice versa. Squeak seemed to recognize them to an extent. Artifacts gestures squeak. to a rat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Orion's eyes just following. To, and like, I, I thought your name was Pip. I know the rat. It is like a familiar. Uh, oh. Right. Yes. It's, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's squeaking. <laughs> oh. Aw. Perfect timing. I trained too well. Yeah. Aw. <laughs> 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 What? What is going on? Are you drawing Louisiana? What is this? No, this is a man <laughs> giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh! With like it a big hat. It took me a hat. second to realize what he was going for. Or, or dope hairdo. <laughs> yeah, it angry a expression. Having likes a it cooking hat. That's a bit slim on the end, though. It's like a little deflated hat. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Let me get in. I distracted the whole group <laughs> with this. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> Gotta break up all the conversations. <laughs> With me, Santa. I was just like doodling. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to trigger all of our ADHDs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I don't remember what we were talking about. <laughs> uh, uh, squeak. Pip, squeak. Oh. Yes, they, they they just said that Squeak knows this uh, the the fiend that that, that took Alex, and we were trying to figure out. Uh, I see Spongebob now. We were trying to figure out who Correct. Squeak was. I was really trying to make <laughs> nice. this into Spongebob, but it's difficult. Yeah. I recognize it. Ah, uh, shit. Hold on a <laughs> second. Oh, I'm giggling. <clears throat> the rat is Squeak. I need some familiar. And Correct. it knows the demon or devil that devil. took my son. Devil. devil. It is okay. a devil. Squeak is it's also a devil. A devil. I... I... All right, gigs up. Poof. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, an armored devil. <laughs> yes. Squeak appears, the, the blue-skinned, webbed-foot uh, tarantula-furred uh, imp appearing in... Full mechanical or made armor. Pouch affixed to the side. And uh, just stands up on his little webbed feet and gives a, an abrupt wave and says, Yeah, I'm Squeak. Squeak to Rox Jr. The moment Squeak reveals his true form, Orion seems less concerned with Squeak. He actually looks away from him. And he looks towards, like, one wall of the living room where there really isn't anything it's just a glass wall and you can see up like beyond the rest of the castle outside then he glances back and says how are you just uh, here what do you mean the fiends are not supposed to be out of the, of the sea They're not supposed to be on land I, uh, I mean, I made an arrangement. I'm here on business. I didn't know that was possible. Hm. Does Iskasak know? Uh, does she have to? I guess not. As long as we don't uh, uh, bring any sources of water in the room, I suppose she won't find out. Uh-oh. Oh. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> don't all of us have, like, a drinking bottle? Hunt effects become... He starts sweating profusely. <laughs> oh, that's water! <laughs> that. I, most, no. No water, not a water bottle, <laughs> So you're saying I shouldn't make it rain in here? Definitely not. Because it was getting a little arid. What, is she like, see everything, everything there's water? Ah, uh, I get it. She sees everything. Ah. Uh. No. Yes. <laughs> Whenever we need to speak, I pull that lever. He points, you can barely see it, it's like right next to a shelf. Water comes out from a mechanism that covers the wall, sort of like this pretty waterfall. And she can come out of it at any moment. I don't believe a glass of water will harm. In fact, can I offer you something? Food? A wine? <laughs> Pip raises I'm, his hand when he says wine. <laughs> I'm, I'm not used to having guests over. I, uh, manners. Yeah. Snacks. Drinks. Just uh, give me a moment. Yeah. Uh, why are you getting the snacks? Let me tell you my backstory. 
Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll just be in the kitchen over here. Yeah, so, uh, your son. Is this a good time to talk about your son? You know, I'm a son, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that Talix, uh, you know, he... He cared a lot about you. I mean, he really looked up to you. That's why he came out on this big grand adventure. And man, I just relate to that. Because <laughs> that's the whole reason I'm out here, you know? Because I look up to my dad so much. And I just want to get promoted just like him. But anyway, your son, yeah, he's in hell now. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> and, uh... It's actually... A big, big boss, uh down there who um who's the one who did it uh his, his name is magdracatch and um and uh yeah he's actually got something to do with pip's parents here getting kidnapped too so uh yeah we've all got some bad experiences with him um you hear a sound of glass breaking from the kitchen. And just a Arin cursing under his breath. He looks like he dropped a glass. And uh, he just keeps gathering things. He eventually brings back a couple of bottles of red wine. Um, and as he sits down and his hand is a little shaky, but he he studies it quickly. He says, I don't actually have a whole lot of food with me right now. Wasn't expecting guests. All right, well, uh, I don't trust about that. We have your tower, so. And he'll, he'll hold up the you little have... the thing. Sorry, you have, you have what? Uh, the, this, and he'll hold up Vakana's leaf. You don't have it. I don't? Mm -mm. Who has it? Right no, before leaving. Like, on the night when you got separated from everybody mm -hmm. else. You went to Brook. You woke him up and you gave it to him and you told him briefly, like, that you'd be gone for a day to, like, not go anywhere. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. I remember that in the recap. Hey, Brooke has the leaf. Oh. Well, I'll Brooke. Take it out. No, you don't have the leaf. Uh oh. Where is it then? <laughs> like, what, this, is out, like, this is out of nowhere. This is out of nowhere. You've memento. never had. You've never had the leaf. Like, I like the fact that Pontifex out. is saying that you have it is really weird. That you guys have been camping out. You know, I, I, I was called away, and so then I decided I want to be long, but it's likely a bad idea to take it with me on account of you all sleeping in the tower. So I left my most precious treasure of my long departed best friend uh, in your care. You know, the only memento we have left of him, which was a gift to him from his own father. That thing. I, th I think he's actually trying to think of if that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I gave it to you and I was said, bit rough. okay, Brooke, I have to leave for a bit. I'll be back in the morning. If you lose this, I will fireball you twice. <laughs> I don't think you did that. <laughs> I'm a history check, Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> did you have it? I have some words for you later because we've been sleeping rough for like a week now. Hey. Oh, you have. I've been fine. A history check, you said? Yes. Pontifex is cooking up some magic <laughs> in his hand. <laughs> There's like a brief moment of panic, Brooke, where you're like, oh shit, <laughs> like, did I forget? But like, you're thinking yeah, really didn't... hard. You're pretty sure this never happened. Like, it doesn't feel like one of those like vague memories of like a dream you've had a long time ago, where like the moment it comes back to mind, it's like, oh yeah, this is a thing. But no, there's there's nothing. I'm not oh, this sure was like a you're... week ago. I'm not sure what you're trying to do there, but I'm not letting you gaslight me into believing that you did. <laughs> <laughs> when have Pip. I ever gaslit 
anyone. That's a little <laughs> crazy. Everyone is talking about how crazy and forgetful you are behind your back. <laughs> Clearly, you're in the wrong here and not me. When am I wrong? I'm literally a professor. My job is to not be wrong. All right, hey, Pontifex, where is the leaf? <laughs> in your possession. Do you well, think then I point like it out. Shit, but I have it. Do you think I traipsed through the woods and didn't sleep in a fucking sauna and instead <laughs> slept in his coat, cuddling well, like one a of cat us said. covered in dirt? <laughs> I Paper. think it's more likely that you yeah. do that to yourself than me doing it to I don't know, you're through. all suspiciously clean. Guys, hush, God's talking to me. <laughs> no, it's okay, I got it in text. <laughs> there, the professor presents oh, a gaslight to the best of his ability. <laughs> Listen, you've picked the right person to gaslight. <laughs> <laughs> You have nothing to contribute to this conversation. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, Sonny, I don't even know you, but surely in your long time knowing Brooke, he's been heavily forgetful, right? He's oh, yeah, that's true. That's the... true. Yes, see? You bring up a friend, good point. Sonny, Sonny should have seen it, right? Brooke, Sonny? I'm pretty sure you do have it. <laughs> I raise another eyebrow and Pib. <laughs> Sonny, you said you, see, you saw everything I saw, right? Did he do it? I... That's... See, it's 2-2-1. Two, two, no, 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 I... <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking back, and this was, like, the day before I came back. So, I, it was the last time I was, uh, you know, a panther in the world of dreams, and I... Uh, what did he call it? It doesn't matter. And I recall that Zeta you were man. doing... Uh, maybe the other way around. Doesn't matter. Uh... Brooke was having trouble sleeping, like, um, at all. And I was watching... Uh, I was watching him. I was watching over him very carefully. I genuinely don't recall uh, you approaching him, Professor. Oh, well, that my doesn't make God. sense. Did you give it to the werewolf? I think he gave it to the werewolf. Oh, my God. What? No, it was distinctly you. Okay. He oh, was just wearing the mask. Oh. No, we we were in the tower, and then like at night, and then I was woken up, and I had to urgently leave, so I left it with the person who I figured was the most responsible. Uh, you. So. Okay. Now is the moment when Paper remembers uh, having identified <laughs> <laughs> that uh, uh, amulet uh, and like one of the abilities that he gave. Uh, Oh my gosh! <laughs> what? Guys, I just remembered something. <laughs> what? You want to know what it is? Okay. <laughs> um, yes. So, so the weird. You know what? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. I'd rather play. I'd rather guess. By the way, Aaron is like watching his squeaks. <laughs> Mouth is opening as yeah. Pip's talking through it. <laughs> But, like, Pip's body is the one making all the gestures. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> My assumption, uh -huh. if I'm deducing this correctly, uh, is that the brook I gave it to yes. is a forgetful shit who is trying to blame <laughs> all of this on me. <laughs> all I'm saying is you are over 400 years old, so it's more likely that you forget things and than I do. His friend Sonny is covering for him. I take you offense to that. I well, would love to get different. Brooke in trouble, actually. <laughs> but this is oh, yeah, that's what, the case. Uh, that's what you would want me to believe, isn't it? <laughs> Pip, Pip, just, Pip just, just looks over to Tekka with a defeated look. <laughs> <laughs> and my other Help hypothesis is that this was a man wearing a mask that made him look like Brooke or something. But that's yeah. all <laughs> he, he disguised himself like this! And then Pip uses disguised self to look like Brooke. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit, I was right. That's what you fell for? <laughs> it was, I was asleep and I was woken up with, hey, your god is dead, let's go. And so I thought, Almost obviously, dead. to leave. Yep. We're, we're going to skim over that because I can't emotionally handle the thought of it at the moment. So and then I thought, well, who can I trust to leave this with? Pip? No. Tech? 
he would say some poems or something, and then no one would know he even had. Virian? No, she might waterlog the damn thing. So you, the most what? trustworthy, responsible adult <laughs> in the group. Anyway, well, we don't have it. Given, given Who me. would disguise themselves as you, and why? Oh, where? Well, we have talked about this. <laughs> All right, listen. Let, we got we got a lot of things to talk about. We got so many questions. We need to stop fighting amongst each other. I'm not I... fighting. I'm blaming. <laughs> <laughs> I am defending you, <laughs> and questioning you know, myself. I have another one. What? An another? Oh, you have a leaf. Oh, thank God. Yeah, it's not a leaf. It's it's a wand, but it's another thing that's made it to summon oh, the tower. Oh, what? Uh, wand. Oh. You always I... know my favorite words. I... I'm not sure if you should carry a pontifex. <laughs> you lost the last one we had and gave it to a complete stranger. What? That's so... not true. I still have the last one we had. And he pulls out the multi-purpose wand and flicks it around. <laughs> I am meant a last leaf. <laughs> Our last home. Oh, the leaf. He, he, yeah. he did lose a different one, though. Yeah, Sorry, that's God making yeah, fun that's of him, true. I didn't mean. <laughs> that's true, thanks God! Even God is on my side. <laughs> <laughs> Say one more thing about my precious wand, I dare you. <laughs> See, I'll make you your face one. look like that dragon chessboard. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Before you impale me on the sword, but uh, you know. <laughs> Okay, Anyways. from context, I'm <laughs> understanding there was some trouble of <laughs> how Alex great figured out read. Alex figured out how to bring my tower into existence, which I'm well, as expected. You may have misplaced a leaf, but I can give you a wand. It's alright. I haven't used my tower in a long time. I have a very important question on that front. Just whether or not we may have accidentally given the leaf to the werewolf. If we use the wand to summon the tower and he also uses the leaf, can he come right into the tower? Because that may be a problem. Rick, is it the same tower or is it just like a duplicate? It is the same tower. Yikes. Noted. Uh, the entire reason why I haven't been using my wand was that... I gave the leaf to, to Talix. I didn't want to risk whisking the tower away while he was inside at any particular moment. I, in all honesty, I don't know what would happen. <laughs> so you mean that it could cause something uh, very bad and unfortunate to happen to this werewolf if he is perhaps waiting in the tower? It's possible that he might uh, move with the tower. It's possible that he might instantly kill him. Ooh. How uh, unfortunate. There's a good chance that, that, that uh, this werewolf, right? You said werewolf. I, right. I, we I, killed I his wife and kids, and now he's pissed <laughs> about it. You're not joking. No. I will have more questions about this later. Great. Regardless, only those with uh, strong magical attunement can even use the leaf in the first place. You know, this werewolf is a spellcaster. Mm, uh, to an extent, of. because he made himself look like Brooke with magic, so. Okay. And en then there is a risk. To my keen eye. Again, I cannot... So maybe it was this guy's self at, like, fifth level. <laughs> Again, I don't know for sure what would happen, but you can have my wand, and you can decide whether you want to use it. Why are you and, here? Uh... <laughs> Why are you here? Well, you're not here to die, are you? No, no. Neither are you, I imagine. No, but like, no, we're we supposed to, to be gym. going on grand adventures and saving the world and 
Why are you here? Okay, uh, we'll ask about saving the world and murdering people later. Uh, setting it all aside. I am a researcher. I'm interested in uncovering everything about Daria. I've been all over the continent. The continents, I suppose. This is one of the places where I have a safe location that I can stay in. I'm not always here. Recently, I've been taking a break. Do you even there know is, what's um, going on with Tinhart and Jamuel right now? Why are you asking me about them? Uh-oh. No reason. I mean... Well, you know that I know them. Have they sent you? Either of them? Well... Yeah, sorta. Can't we... Can't we just tell them? What? Oh, yeah, I figured you were going to. Jamuel... Jamuel's kind of dead, but kind of not. And Tin Hearts looking over him in the tower. Wait, we what? thought that. Oh shit! <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. Uh. Virian. <laughs> <laughs> there's something we need to tell you about. I keep asking if there's anything else I should know, and you keep promise me <laughs> that the answer is no. Well, now we're telling you. I don't think we can make that promise because we seem to forget what happened and then remember at very convenient times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go sit down while you continue. Glass of wine? Please, two maybe. <laughs> this doesn't <laughs> seem to surprise you anyway. I'll take the bottle. Uh, surprise who? Uh, the the Arin? Yeah. Oh no! He, the moment, uh, uh, the moment that you said that uh, Jamil is kind of dead, he—he's not very expressive, just in general. Even when you were talking about his son, he his expression has remained mainly serious and neutral for the majority of it. <clears throat> you saw his hand shaking one time. He dropped a glass when he wasn't near you. That's like the most expressive that he has been. Um, you did see him just widening his eyes ever so slightly when you said that Jamil was dead. <clears throat> and he does shake his head. <clears throat> Excuse me. He shakes his head and says, I had no idea. I haven't seen him in a while. He figured he was working on his book. Well, he was. And uh, Pip sort of nods to Virian. Yeah, he's not Yuri very good at it. By two the way. full glasses of wine in front of you. <laughs> yes, she has one full <laughs> glass of wine in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you want to pull out the you want to pull out the book? Yeah. Oh. yeah, right. I have the book. I have it. I keep forgetting I yeah, have I was, it. I was noticing that earlier. <laughs> I don't see the book on anyone's table. It is I have it. here. Yeah, it's Under covered. Oh, I see. I, you yeah. gave that to the werewolf, too. <laughs> <laughs> and the seed. Are you going to try to blame it on me, ha too, huh? Pontifex <laughs> does have the seed. He didn't give it to anyone. Oh, good. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think he would under any circumstance. Yeah, Tekka kept asking me to go up and downstairs instead of just talking to Nui through the book himself, so I ended up picking the book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <okay. clears throat> This yeah, is his no, guide. Like... His dog is in it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when when Virin held up the book, Aaron just nodded along. You seem to recognize it. And then at this part, he he was taking a sip of wine, and it seems to like he gets stuck in his throat for a moment, and he gives a small cough, 
and says, What do you mean, his dog? Orm. I, I know his name, it's just... Dog is in the book. Okay, elaborate. Right. What does that mean? It, the dog is in the book. <laughs> <laughs> the the Unin named Orm is in the book. Correct. Right now. Orm, say hi. <laughs> Vir, well, open the book. Virin, oh yeah, right Virin opens up, uh, opens up the, to, to an empty page, and you see hi, immediately writing up with like three exclamation marks and a little smiley face, and uh, <laughs> um, he learned how to do emojis. <laughs> <laughs> little heart emoji <clears throat> shows up, and Arian just leans back on the recliner. This seems to have taken him just completely off guard. Um, we ain't even third the craziest started yet. thing, yes, sir. <laughs> <clears throat> Believe me, you'll get used to it. Okay. Is a sentient book like that crazy for him? Given the the College of Scribes was in the the Nelly and Arden. I think it's less the sentient book and more the fact that the dog's in the book. The, that's okay. exactly it. Yeah, that's okay, exactly okay. it. Like, and you've seen in a dream that like Aaron has, like, the dog was there during that one dream where you saw Aaron. So mm -hmm. like he's familiar with the dog. He just kind of massages his forehead for a moment and says, "Okay, strangest no, but pretty strange thing for uh, Jamuel to do." I suppose, well, he always really liked that dog. Uh, I didn't think he liked the dog enough to turn it into a book. Well, that I is think it... just I... strange. Yeah, it's approve. wacky. Well, well, would you would you approve if 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 it was the only way to save Orm's life? Did something happen to Orm? They got pushed off a cliff. Okay. Okay, makes more sense. I suppose, to a degree. Uh, Pinhart sent Saskaran to get uh, the book, right? No yeah. idea who Saskaran is. Okay, Saskaran is Tinhart's friend. Tinhart sent Saskaran to get the book because Tinhart was mad that Jamie was taking all of the credit for writing the book. Even though Tinhart discovered Ladaria with Jamie. Is that all true? Um in you see that uh, some words appear on the empty pages. As uh, Orm like seems to be attempting to calm down Aaron and let him know that uh, he's fine. <clears throat> uh, at at what you said, Pip, uh, he Aaron. <sighs> okay. Aaron just gives a small shake of the head and says. Jamuel warned me that there was a man after him who has been trying to steal his accomplishments from him. That's all I know of Tinhart. Why do you name his dog after him? Likely as an insult. But we know they were friends at some point. I uh, asked once he said it was, uh, well, irony. I never asked too many questions. Jamil liked to dismiss them. He's not, uh, was not uh, exactly a pleasant person to make small talk with. We went along. As long as we talked about Ladaria and our respective discoveries. And you're s certain you can trust his word on that measure? 
all things considered. No, not at all. He most certainly... I've caught him embellishing stories, things that I was there for, when I would talk to other people. There were many things he never offered an explanation about, even when asked. And, in all honesty, I wouldn't find it too difficult to believe what you are saying. Perhaps this man who had an issue with Jamuel had a good reason to have an issue. Apparently, he is keeping watch over Jamuel's dead body, so there's that. He's got extra. Can I have another glass of wine, please? I would be. <laughs> yeah, here you go. Sorry, I Viri, and I should explain. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of other naked Jamuels in jars there. <laughs> Takes another glass of wine. <laughs> Aaron just places the whole bottle in front of her. <laughs> goes to get another. <laughs> but we can't wake them up. We thought that maybe this staff would help with that. This is Jamuel's staff, right? Why Why is it here? It is Jamuel's staff. It was found um, a while back. It's been a few months now. The Iskasek brought it to me. Said it had writing on it that came from my world, and when I told her I recognized it and knew the order, she left it with me. You never tried to return it? I did. Um, small problem with that. Uh, you're familiar with uh, the tower, yes? Uh, Jamiel calls it Nowhere Tower. Where he lives and... Correct. You're aware that there are doors to and Everywhere, from it? Everywhere, correct. We have used a number of them. Okay, good. That's less explaining for me to do. There is one here. Uh, this one of those is... doors is what put Talix on the sixth floor. Uh, yeah, yeah, correct. And uh, it's right upstairs. The door hasn't worked in a while. <clears throat> so I've been... I used to uh, use this tower to travel across Lidaria quickly, easily. It hasn't worked in a while. I thought he had perhaps sealed off access to this one for one reason or another, but if he's dead, then I imagine the entire thing is no longer operational. Well... We might be able to get it working again. Hey, Tin Art! Pit looks over to the mechanical raven that I guess we've been thinking <laughs> of this, this whole time. <laughs> it's like at the bottom of someone's backpack, there is a whole other <laughs> argument sequence where everybody's like, you have it, no, you have it, no, you have it. And eventually like it is found. It. <laughs> eventually it is found. Um, and... Yeah, there is, there is now a mechanical raven that is on a, a pip's lap. Okay, sixth floor, glass castle. Aaron's here, we're here. Can we get that door open? Blink twice if you understand. This mechanical raven is not equipped with eyelids, but it just takes flight. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out of here. So you are friends <laughs> with Tinheart? What I didn't hear you. You are you're you're acquainted with Tinheart. Yeah. He's a cool dude. He made my armor. 
Okay. He's he's fine then. He's not actually out to harm Jamio. He never meant for him to die. He just wanted to get the book back. Is he responsible for his death? Yeah. <laughs> Kinda. Huh. It's really hard to avoid that part. But but you're still cool with him. Yeah. Struggling to I wrap mean, my head around this, but that's I suppose it's all right. You can't really judge too much on the count of we killed the werewolf's wife and kids, also not right. intending to do so. I mean, well, we intended to kill them, but we didn't know they were wife and kids. I would like to point out that I had nothing to do with this part. <laughs> I uh, know, but uh, you will suffer for it. You're guilty by association. Unfortunately. Aaron <clears throat> would like to know more about the werewolf and the wife and the kids. Uh, are you guys... Uh, we don't have to actually like roleplay that, but would you answer his questions in that regard? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He'll ask and you fill him honesty. in. I love all the drawings that are happening. <laughs> we like the map. It's a good map. This one is my favorite. <laughs> is this the full one? <laughs> is there a secret third continent? <laughs> I will not confirm <laughs> nor deny. If she tells us, it's not a secret. Well, we've got a lot more questions for you, so do you have time? I'm not heading anywhere. I am... You mentioned that Talix came here because of me. He was following in your footsteps. I didn't really take him for the adventure in kind. Well, he was the best. Yeah, he really had the knack for it. Are you aware of... Uh... Well, you are in the company of a devil, so I'd imagine... You understand what happens in the sea. The sea around Ladaria, that is. Very well. To my knowledge, there is no surviving that. I think he's being kept alive. For some reason. We there's... saw it when we talked to the gods. Yeah. That's how he was fine. There is no surviving it without intervention, let's say. Then I plan to find a way. I'll... I'll have to get him out. Somehow. I, I, I wouldn't have any leads, but... I'll think of something. I've never been there for him. His mother raised him. And when he sought me out, once he was an adult by human years, I... Well, I didn't make time for him. Why? I was busy. I wanted him to figure out his own life. But he's the best man I've ever met. Sorry, Brooke. Sorry, Tekka. <laughs> what, am I not a man? <laughs> no, you're not good. <laughs> 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 Never thought I would be cut so deep by a child. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. 
I was hurt for a second, but just made up for it. said you had questions. More of them. And, uh, Anyone I... else want to take them? <laughs> uh, I... Burning question. I'm sure we all want to know. What's this uh, arrangement that you have uh, going on with uh, Iskasek here? You seem to be on decent terms. I have inherited the kindness that she has offered, she has extended to Jamuel. This tower is meant to be Jamuel's lodgings. Once we met and uh, we explored the parts of Dara together, he eventually brought me here, put in a good word for me, and I am welcome to stay. Do you know... Uh why she took interest in Jamiel to begin with, or he took interest in her, whatever he's into. I'm afraid not. It's one of the many things that Jamil refused to elaborate upon. Really, any time it came down to talking about him rather than the things he had discovered. I don't think they're friends. Nothing like that. I've definitely heard him speak of bringing information to her. My assumption was always that uh, he would explore the continent and let her know what he had found out. But it is an assumption. I, I don't suppose she has been forthcoming with the information either. Iskasek is not exactly one to answer many questions. She prefers to ask them. She uh, demands answers. Would be a better way of putting it. She makes a little time for us. Me for him. How much do you know about her? Have you encountered her? I have not. We were told to avoid her, if uh, at all possible. He's very, very tall. They are very big. Hmm. That she is. She can't uh, fit in this room. If we ever speak, it is only her face that I can see through the uh, waterfall. He like points at the wall where he explained earlier. He just gestures at it. Generally, if is here, it is because something has gone wrong. Or there is some kind of problem. She can be uh, accusatory. Many times something has happened in the castle and she would show up here and ask if I had anything to do with it. The answer always being no, but that hasn't eased her worries, I don't think, not, not ever. I think she dislikes anyone who isn't an Ezen, to a degree. I think we need to rip the band-aid off of 
something that we really need to know about. What can I help you with? What's the deal with the seed? The seed? What? And then, like, he pauses. Our next one's on seed. (laughs) (laughs) I do have this one. Is... Is that Vakanath's? Correct. Oh, God. Professor, you? You've been trusted with it? Well... Uh, I wasn't the first choice, but uh, I, I was the second. <laughs> well, I... That's incredible. Of all people. Talix was the first. Uh, Talix was? Correct. Why would... Why would... I don't know. He came into uh, possession of the seed and was going to come to Ladaria and me being who I am and him being who he is to you I couldn't let him leave alone and the opportunity of seeing my friend again was not one I could pass up and uh, I was growing bored uh, just (laughs) living in the elf city so I decided uh, to do something about it so I came with him and uh, uh, one thing led to another and he entrusted it to me and now he is gone well yeah he kind of had to give it to him because he was being sucked into the ocean and the devil couldn't keep its hands on it. It burned its fish body. I had no idea that Talix had been entrusted with the seed. You know why it had to be brought here, yes? You know why it needs to be here we have heard the one version but uh, I would like to hear yours okay uh, Bakanas has her flaws as elves are not exactly fond of her or of anything that has come from her or her followers. But if there is one thing that I cannot deny as a scientist, it is the fact that the roots hold our planes of existence together. Her physical presence keeps the planes in alignment. Lidaria lacks anything like it. The earthquakes that the continent has been experiencing recently are a sign that this world is in peril. I can offer no other solution outside of the one that Jamiel brought to my attention. Which is to bring a Vakanath here. I don't know exactly how. Jamil managed to procure a seed. Media is to plant it. It's somewhere in the middle of the continent. Jamil procured the seed? He said he would know how to get his hands on it. It is concerning. Let's see. Uh said he was in possession of the gods and uh, he could set things in motion so that he would get here. He had considered me for the job, but I couldn't go to Ladar and get it. It would take extra time. I don't really know what he did. I don't mean to repeat myself, but he doesn't speak much of himself and the things that he does. This doesn't exactly boost my confidence on this measure. 
I'm not particularly fond of Jamio. In all honesty, I find him to be uh, unpleasant company. But he is brilliant, and he has always shown respect for the ways of Ladarians. He has never broken their rules, though he has mocked them relentlessly. I do believe his heart is in the right place, at least as far as this situation is concerned. I've seen how passionate he can be when he explores new places on this continent, when he meets new people, and I have no reason to think that he wouldn't want to help Ladaria. I do not know if bringing something like Vakanath here is a good idea, but I have no others. Uh, I think it, it could work. It could work. It could also... I'm not sure if I trust the plan. I'll, in all honesty. I'll be straightforward. As you said, I have reasons not to care much for Vakanath. Or a version of her. I don't... Especially if it's a version of her who might not have learned a lesson. Hmm. I don't know if you said he seems respectful, but then mocks the people here. How can you be so sure that he's being completely altruistic on this front then? I am just to a degree. I don't like the idea of bringing anything related to Vakanath here either. Jamil has you... never really been a religious. I don't think he would do it for Vakanath. Or for any other god, for that matter. Are you I confident take, in him? Um... <laughs> or, do you, uh... or do you just want something to be confident in? <laughs> <laughs> I've spoken ill of Jamil a lot to today. It's... Perhaps I... I do have positive things to say about him, too. Personality-wise... I wouldn't want to be friends with him. That's... that's true. But... As mean as he can be at times, I, I do trust him. I would put my trust in him. I just have trouble putting my trust in, granted, somebody I've never met, who insists on being secretive about such a grand machination as bringing gods to a world they don't belong in. It took uh, um, a lot of convincing. I wasn't on board with the plan at first either. We explored other options. For a time, we traveled together across the continent. We have consulted with some of some of the guardians. Um, I wish there was an alternative. There is none that I can offer. Not one that I have found yet. Although I have not what? stopped looking. What did the Ladarian say then? I consulted them. It 
seems a lot of Ladarians believe that it's time for new gods to be born. The ones that uh, I have most information on, supposedly they're, they're all gone. Busy with something that has taken them away from the world. They no longer interact with the people of the continent like they used to. They used to walk among them, but they haven't been seen in centuries. Many different... Yeah, we saw. Uh, you can't right. just drop that on me. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is true. Okay, sorry, go on. Forget I said anything. No, 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 now I need to know. You met the gods of Ladaria. Which one? Yeah, several. Just a four of them. Well, three. Right. Uh huh. Which ones? The uh, Kirill and Muriel are the most recent. Uh, here we got uh, these in the in the process. I pick up with this. Uh, and Pontifex is gonna pull out his piece of constellation. <laughs> You're a star. Yeah. Dead. Okay. Yeah. Oh. I traded mine to a bird. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, Pontifex will just hand it over to him. It makes light. Apparently. It's beautiful. Thank you. It is uh, apparently me. So I take that as a personal compliment. <laughs> I've. Never seen anything like this. Muriel and Muriel said that if we plant the seed, that would solve the problem, but it would cause unimaginable um, pain, badness. We think there's a drow in the seed. Do you know anything about that? Why do you think that? It's a long the, the, story. There shouldn't be... It's a seed. How can... What? Is this like the book? Someone else explain. <laughs> I don't fully understand it enough to give an accurate dissertation. I feel I would mislead. Also, for clarity, the Kirill Emiriel said that uh, the seed will stabilize the land, but it won't be without unimaginable consequences. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah, also that uh, Kirill Emiriel said that the seed will stabilize the <laughs> land without uh, crazy consequences. It, it, they they seem like it would do the thing you said it would do, but it would also do other stuff that you probably don't think it would do, and it would be really bad, but still probably worth doing. Yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> Okay. You've... Well, if you really met with uh, Kirill and Muriel, the, uh -huh. did they come here? On Lidaria? Where uh, they... No, we... We went to them. up on the moon? Were they doing something? Uh, no, they were statues. Uh, there was a moon, and we we were on the moon, and then there was a little dragon, and I became infatuated as I do. So we chased the little dragon into a hole, and we entered the moon, and on the inside of the moon, there was a bunch of walkways and uh, statues that when you would do something to them, uh, the room would turn, or the gravity would shift, or something of that sort. But then there were like beautiful starways that you could look out to, uh, to and then eventually we came into a room with the two statues of them uh, that then were not statues anymore. And uh, they blessed us uh, to an extent and uh, now we understand Ladari, Ladari and Draconic. And Krell. And then Krell from another. For clarity, <laughs> they, they were not statues. 
They were Who real. Like, did the dragon scare you in the mirror? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought did when we entered the room, I thought they were statues. And then no, no, no. Just... No, no, no. They're not. They're, oh. They were not. Okay, I, they were actually, just there and they were chained to like, the pillars. No, not to, to anything. To they had chains on We them. walked into the room and there were two whole ass dragons just standing there. <laughs> <laughs> All godly and stuff. <laughs> And then they told us a bunch of things. And gave us, assigned us all a constellation. Okay, wow, that's... It's incredible, Professor. You and your friends are doing incredible things on Doria. The gods haven't been Definitely. seen in centuries, as I mentioned. Not as mundane as using a piece of the god of creation to make a house, that's for sure. Not a god, just a dragon. Oh, fuck. A dragon who made everything. Yeah. I know. That's a lot. But yes, exciting. Oh, also, somewhere along the way, uh, I won a wizard tournament and then I turned into a dragon and I was a dragon for a while. You need to stop dropping these things on me, just like that. Right. So we did the trade with a wandering uh, person, and I found the wand, and I was like, oh, I like that wand, I want it, so I got it. And then when I delved a little bit deeper, it turns out the wand could turn me into a dragon. When it did, I felt like a dragon. Uh, and then I felt like stretching my wings, and then I felt the calling to the sky. So I flew to the sky and into the dragon islands, and then there was a cage, and it was sized just for me, and it looked oh so cozy. And then I climbed into the cage, as one obviously does. Uh, and then uh, my wits came back to me and I was imprisoned in the cage by the Lord of the Skies and he took back my prism that my parents left me as a child, which is apparently a scale of the Lord of the Skies. And then after taunting me and taking away my wand, he then threw me back to the surface of the world in the cage. And I have been jaded about it ever since. After a few weeks, you start to get used to this, the, the dropping things like that on you out of nowhere. Well, yeah. and <laughs> Pontifex talks about this every day, so... I thought he's, I was mumbling to myself, I apologize. He's, he's if very bitter about this. <laughs> I'm I'm this one I was bitter. desensitized to. You don't know what being a dragon feels like. You don't get it. Well, and you had that prison when you, prism when you were a baby on yeah, Plurna. Yeah, there's the prism So how's, how's that work? I don't want to talk about the prism because I'm going to get angry. You're already angry. I'm You're always angry. angry. The fireballs are coming. No. I can feel them welling up. No. Wait, Pontifex, yes. can't we just make a new one? I mean, what? it's obviously not the same. Make a new what? Wand? Yeah. I. Brooke I holding know. up the gem of creation. Yeah. I, I don't know if it can make magical things, but uh, if, if that is possible. Uh, Brooke, I might kiss you. Uh. <laughs> oh, you know, try carefully. Sure. Matter of fact, give me that gem. You guys can explain no, to him. No, I'm no, 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 no. Hey, no. What? Whatever we do with the gem has to be a group conipsis. I agree. There, there might be better, something better suited to use it for than turning into a dragon again. No, I don't want to turn into a dragon. I want the wand. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I I think that Tekka should hold the gem because Tekka wants for nothing. Tekka will say some poem and then the gem will make it through. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like some kind of idea. <laughs> and the gem slash me will be left to be like, okay, what the fuck does this mean? What can I do? <laughs> Wait, I want this idea even more. <laughs> I give the gem to Tekka if he takes. Uh, yeah, I think Tekka refuses to take that gem. No, no. Damn it. Tekka, no. It's like, it's like, I can't say this. I was going to make a reference to a book series. <laughs> It's like Lord of the Rings, Tekka. You have to be the one to carry the ring. <laughs> You're the only one who won't use it. <laughs> uh, 
My name may or may not be Boromir, but I will gladly carry the name <laughs> for the sake of everyone else. I mean, why shouldn't I have it? <laughs> Perfect. Give me the gem. <laughs> we'll it's talk a about that idea. <laughs> I should have. I shouldn't have brought it up. I'm sorry. Okay. Well, now that it's out, it can't go back. Now I want to know. Well, well, I guess we'll have a vote about that. I personally like my idea of connecting the Dragon Isles to the ground so that they won't be so haughty about it, but... Uh, one All right. is, is better. I do recall... the... gem. Not a gem, a creation. Uh, yours, Professor. Oh, Remember? yes, you know my parents. Uh, the, the, all, all this important god meeting stuff I, aside. Uh, I don't uh, know your parents. I just recall that time you showed me the prison. But, but you've met them. Um, Talix dreamed it. I, I have not met your parents. Inside check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, go ahead, roll it. All right, all right, all right. Oh, well, I don't think I put down the five. All right, in the dream, oh, it's the werewolf. 24, then. 24? Yeah. Dang. The RN seems genuine, just entirely. Oh. He's not the easiest person to read because he emotes, he emotes so little, but a lot of this conversation has definitely thrown him off multiple times. You would always see whenever he would be confused by something or surprised by something. Um, and it's like with each and every minute it has become a little bit harder and a little bit harder for him to like hide his surprise or his confusion and like at this moment he's genuinely perplexed as to why Pontifex would claim that yes, met his parents maybe he didn't know so that's where your parents they look just like him well not all the dogs look alike you heard it from you. You heard it from, and this is Jamuel's words, the magical frog couple about what to do with, with, with the world being unstable. I, I don't know how you could possibly know any of that, but I have met two Vidalkin here on the Daria. And those They're, were my parents. No, they are significantly younger than you, Professor. Right, I understand that, but... That aside, let's suspend logic. Uh, that is my mother and father. Oh. How do you know? Why would you because think that? It was in the you dream. You didn't. You never. In my memory is not failing me yet, Alex's Professor. Dream. You said you didn't know them. You've never known them. No, I haven't. Okay. What's this about dreams, then? But I know that was them. They had my prison. It is the only thing I was left with as a baby on the door of that cleric of the goat. It was me, a basket, and that prism. They had it. It was for me. I mean, uh, Aaron, you you know who I am and, and what my acclamations yes. are. Are it it goes to to make sense that my parents are likely incredibly powerful spellcasters on a, on a degree that the mortal world has never witnessed before, which is why they were able to birth greatness such as me. <laughs> and so... Uh, <laughs> immortality is, is but... The, maybe my mother and father are liches. Do liches exist? <laughs> they, they do, they do. Uh, okay. Liches exist. <laughs> Don't make fun of my accent, it is racist. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I don't know, man, they're super powerful wizards or something. Uh, I wasn't a wizard until I came over to the West, but imagine if I was left on the doorstep of a wizard and not the cleric, how powerful I would be. Have you 
Have you met them here or on Ledaria? But no. What, would I, what are we waiting for? There's a door leading right to them. What? 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 You said... Well, how... <laughs> Tekka, your turn. You said... <laughs> Tekka's too cool. <laughs> Tekka. You said you could fix the door, yeah? If we can get to the tower, we can go to them. There's a door that leads to them. There is. What? Where on this heavily detailed map do you presume that is? I'm gonna uh, guess. I'm gonna guess it's like, like up here. <laughs> Please, your no, guesses. No, that's like 1617. This is dangerous. It's like, uh, I'm gonna guess, guess here. You guess it's way down here. And you guys walk right past it. We're gonna do geo guesser. <laughs> <laughs> it's a starting I area think... class. You missed it. I think that my parents would <laughs> prefer to be surrounded by our lifeblood, and so I'm going to presume it is here. Or on a small island. Perhaps the eye of the yelling giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> but you all immediately in character know precisely which landmass I am talking about. Oh, that's where the <laughs> final boss is. <laughs> Oh, I thought the final boss was this uh, flabbergasted jalapeno. <laughs> the jalapeno that's realized that the yelling giraffe's power level is over 9,000. That's a rhino. Yes. Oh, I thought it was a jalapeno. Oh, it's a rhino! <laughs> I only see the flabbergasted jalapeno now. <laughs> <laughs> Give me the monocle? What is that? It's his scouter to check the giraffe's power level. <laughs> oh, oh. This is the strangest yin yang that I've ever seen. <laughs> it's his scouter. The yelling giraffe and the. <laughs> the yelling giraffe and the surprise jalapeno rhino. Yeah. Balance. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, we'll they're all wrong. Oh, no. What does it say? Oh, 9001. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Arin, I was like, lube? <laughs> Arin unfolds <laughs> the map again, and he says, the tallest peak in all of the Daria. Uh, so presumably that is like center land, man? Oh, somewhere. No. Or here? Oh, oh. Yeah, the we whole mountain, hold on, that. I'm trying very hard to try to see. Uh, because the witch is like right here. <laughs> the who? The witch. Which the one, one that sent. The one that the werewolf made a deal with. It's at. The witch is under the mountain. And my parents are on the mountain. Yeah. Well, geographically looking, this is like a 12 to 13. This might be a bit much. <laughs> what? <laughs> On the arbitrary scale of 1 to 20, leading deeper into the <laughs> land of Odaria, this is around 12, 13. No, I think we're going there now. And we're like an 8. <laughs> That's a death sentence. Yeah, but we might be in 9 soon, so let's just go. <laughs> okay, right. So all of the other questions that we have, we're going to ignore all of those and put those on the back burner because my mom and dad are perhaps on a rock in the middle of Ladaria and there's a door like right there. And they're liches. Hey, where's and the hole? Liches. What hole? What? The hole, the big hole in the center of the Ladaria. Mm. Ah, I've never seen it. The one that Vakanat is supposed to fix. Uh, according to Jamio, it is a small distance away from. Uh, um, the shortest distance between the two continents. So I would imagine it would be somewhere around here. <laughs> Fuck off, Boston. That's the center. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's pretty good. If that's accurate, I'm mad. <laughs> it's right here. <laughs> okay. Maybe. 
Uh, yeah, he like he he pointed at this like area. He said it should be somewhere around around here. I I haven't see. seen it for myself. I, I didn't hear what you said, Jory. I said like a sixteen. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sixteen. Yeah, that uh, you don't hop over until you hit seventeen, and uh, and we all have ninth level spells. This is ninth level spell land. Oh land my god! I just game. understood why you were putting everything on a scale from one to twenty. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah, I'm slow. Zones. Sorry, Tekka, your home is like in game level. That's yeah, why yeah, yeah, yeah. you were Landers. saying that. <laughs> yeah. This area where my mom and dad are is like 12, 13. Following the map. <laughs> guess I'm perfectly are you guys linear now? so far. Eight. Eight. Okay, noted. Or are we? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> what are you getting at? <laughs> yeah, so you level, level up five times. <laughs> oh, right, let's go see Time to go. <laughs> uh, you know, okay. This whole Bad numbered news. problem would just go away if I perhaps had my old wand. Uh, so the terrible news is that the the none of the drawings will carry over when I change maps. It's okay. No. That just means so. we get to enjoy it all over again next time. I spent time. a frustrating amount of time drawing Torterra over here. Good that is very good. <laughs> I recognized it right away. Oh, 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 yeah, there we go. We have two copies. Just in case anything this happens. stream one. sponsored by the Pokemon Company. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Nintendo is like gonna totally erase my channel. Okay, half of your Ladarian animals are just Ladarian Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> Legally yeah, distinct. They no. <laughs> They're not. <laughs> okay, this crocodile thing, that's just a Pokemon. This squeaking that's, bird thing, that's also just a Pokemon. This, like, blob whale, that's also a Pokemon. It's clearly this a sponge. Giraffe this egg and Rhyhorn. This little, like, shovel fish is what evolves into this weird whale. There's Ladarian Torterra. Well, anyway, <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> it's much See, bigger. Yeah. I, I heard Pippa speaking. <laughs> sorry. Hey, Aaron. I'm sorry that they're graffitiing on your map. <laughs> I don't know why, but it's okay. I have other copies. You want to keep that it's one? It's a coping mechanism. Yeah. You can keep that one. Okay. Um, so... So, do you want to... Are you going to help us save Talix? I plan to help him. Do you have any ideas? Do you know what we could do? Uh, um, I, I don't know. I thought you, you could do something. Up until today, I always believed firmly that anyone who falls into the sea is gone forever. But that is not an explanation I can accept right now, so I'll try to find some solution of some kind. Objectively speaking, you can in fact fall into the sea and come out I won't say fine, but if somebody wants to, a devil of sorts want to, wants to intervene, you can come out. Aaron glances over at Squeak. Yeah. Like, expectedly. Can you get us there? Safely? I may have some connections, but, uh, Honestly, it sounds like you do, too. He hesitates for a moment, and then he says, You think Iskasek would help? Uh, uh, maybe. I can try speaking to her. I 
Don't know if we'll get if we'll get me anywhere, but we'll try. For now, let me uh, let me show you uh, your way to your parents' artifacts. Uh huh. While we walk up there, Virian has a question for you too. Go what ahead and it? ask it, Virian. What? what? Do I? Yeah. Well, what? he said that you did, so you do. You've got one. I go yeah. ahead. In Conde Fly. I want to know what my question is. No, th that's not your question. That's a good question. <laughs> Can you like whisper to my ear? Okay. You gotta, you gotta lean over. I'm really short. I'm so am I. Oh, okay, not that. She, I, thought, I always thought Varian was kind of tall. Um. She, 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 Okay, okay. Noah said that he could travel through dreams. And he's an elf. You're an elf. You're wondering how that all works. So go ahead and ask him. Oh, oh right. Um, I, I just, he seemed a little confused about the conversation, but I suppose. Um, I do have a question. Um, uh, it must have been the wine, I forgot. Um. You seemed interested in the conversation that Noah and I were having earlier about dreams and traveling through them. Do you know anything about that? Hmm. I mentioned that I was open to speak to an Etaradov. I've been trying to for a long time. And I, I had one right here in my house, but he... Well, for one, he was in a hurry to get to his new house, <laughs> apparently. <laughs> and secondly, the conversation the two of you had actually was pretty much what I wanted to hear. I've the Atara do there, very rare. They're rare here. Since you guys are not leaving, let me just put the music back. Because <laughs> I was like, okay, they're leaving. And I was like, well, maybe not. <laughs> um, it was uh, a long time ago, back on the Zasport Peninsula, near the Elven Colony, I encountered a handful of them. Uh, three Itaraduv. They were not the nicest people. They seem to have an issue with uh, uh, outsiders. Our interaction wasn't uh, a positive one. But it is fr from that encounter that I first got uh, an idea. They were being somewhat hostile towards me insisted on us uh, leaving the continent, not digging up uh, any ruins and not touching anything. And Well, when things turned somewhat uh, um, physically hostile, I tried to calm them down and I tried to make an escape by casting a spell that would put them to sleep. He was the best thing I could, th I could think of that would not harm them. The spell did not work, and they mocked me for it. They said that I can't put to sleep somebody who is already sleeping. I didn't know much about Tetharaduv back then, and I've learned more ever since, but that encounter it got this idea in my mind. A crazy one. But I thought elves can't sleep either. And now you're thinking that maybe you're actually asleep somewhere and this is all a dream of sorts. That's the theory. And I'm this close to being able to prove it. Under different circumstances, I might ask the professor to accompany me. Uh, there is this set of ruins. They're not too far from the castle. I think they might hold an answer. But... 
Perhaps that can be an adventure for another time. The offer does stand, Professor. And any of you uh, right. who may wish to accompany us. Of course, because uh, af after all of this is, is whatever, you're you're not uh, leaving. You're staying with us, obviously, to get back to Alex, yes? Maybe we have to plant what? the seed of Akanath, maybe, to maybe save this place. We have several more gods to meet. We have to save Talix, we have to meet my parents, we have to deal with the dragons and get my prison back. We have, we have all sorts of things that we have to do. You want me to be with you throughout all of that? Well, obviously, you're a genius. I appreciate that, but I... Well... It's better than sitting at the top of a glass tower. <laughs> what is it with you and towers? Is it a wizard thing? Uh, the, no, it's an elf thing. It we like to be tall. <laughs> we live in towers. We like to build towers. It disturbs the land the least. I see. That, yeah, that's uh, all that there is to it. a surprising amount of sense. <laughs> mm. But uh, yes, of Let's, course I want you to uh, accompany I... us. I haven't seen you in 30 years. I will think about it. We have to save your son. I will say my my own curiosity is burning on this front. I, say, I have all but been given confirmation from an, another... Her, her, I'm sorry, I'm still kind of new to all of this. Um, Karadouf. Um, that's... When we were dealing with our uh, the werewolf who uh, did attack us by traveling through dreams, that she had to help me confront him in the dream world because, as she put it herself without my prompting, I'm already asleep. That's... that's incredible. I thought I would be the first person to make that discovery. Name it after myself. It's like you got there before I did. I mean... We'll need actual evidence, of course, but I believe you. I mean, I'm less concerned about this being a discovery I can put my... You're not at all concerned that this is... puts to question, or does it not put to question the entirety of of our existence, everything that we have been through, everything that's happened. Am I concerned about it? I mean, it just seems like it's such a big thing to not even know about, for any of us to know about. It is. It is incredible. It would change everything about our understanding of the world. Of elves? Of more than just that. And I find it fascinating that we found this whole other world and it can teach something about ourselves. And if this is true, and it's starting to really sound like it is, we need to let everyone know. Have... Have I... you been able to get there to where, what did he call it uh, Arul was it Arul yeah. Arul um, I have found magic that can take me there it is it works for mere seconds I can get glimpses of this reflection of this world I don't believe there is any uh, My current theory is that there are two methods of traveling to and from the dream world. One being sleep, which is something that most people are naturally capable of doing. And then there's magic, which does not involve the 
Uh, in my case, it doesn't involve the physical body, the, uh, the real one, supposedly, that I would have somewhere that is not here. I don't sleep and I don't wake up. I just step into this other place. I was, um, as uh, Noah put it, I had a, a guide who was able to bring me there for more than just a few seconds. And it was a strange feeling. I felt myself, but different. It's hard to put words to. Virion, you and I might just change history for elves forever. It is... Uh, you were asking me... Why... I am reacting the way that I am. The professor might have mentioned it, but in the past, him and I entertained ideas that many back in Plurna would consider irethical, would consider absolutely out of touch with reality and with everything we know about the world. That's what the two of us do, I suppose. It, uh, our little conversation has formed the basis for everything I have done uh, in, uh, in recent memory. On that note, I did call you crazy a long time ago. About, Not just um, you. Especially as far as uh, arcane and divine magic are concerned. Although... Ever since I've come here, I've started to think that you might be more right than you think. Oh, no, I'm entirely confident that I'm correct, but I'm glad that <laughs> it is that you're starting to see my way of the uh, way of things. Let us speak about this some other time. Hmm. You must be very excited to meet your, your parents. Um, and you're certain not to get uh, frustrated. You're certain that the people I spoke to, they're related to you. I feel it. I don't feel things often, but I feel bad. It's like I have this uh, racial feature called Vidalkin Dispassion <laughs> that says I don't really feel stuff too much. <laughs> Except for me, I'm a special case. I feel outrage. <laughs> <laughs> otherwise, not much. <laughs> Oops. Okay. Orin <laughs> uh, <laughs> gestures towards, like, in general direction where the mechanical bird flew towards, um, where you can see through multiple glass walls that there's another set of stairs that leads upward. Uh, and says, I do hope, um, Virion, that we, we can discuss this further and... We can perhaps take this um, idea and find evidence for it, physical, undeniable evidence, and perhaps find freedom, the ability to sleep and dream, or at the very least find answers. For now, I, I am afraid that that will have to wait. I mean, should you want to go to the ruins? So this has been uh, absolutely pressing on my mind since I have discovered. I would say it would be costing me sleep at night, but you know it's not. It's an expression. It's 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 been fully occupying my thoughts. I am. Not entirely sure if this can ease your worries, but after everything we've learned, it's clear to me that the Plurnan idea of dreams is incomplete, uh, incorrect entirely. The Darians, and 
this does seem to apply to the majority of them, despite their cultural differences. But I see dreams as a... a world, a place that they can go to, where they can live, where other beings live. A place just as real as this one. We think of dreams as this thing that takes place in our heads. That has hardly any significance, say for when uh, a god visits someone, a cleric, in their dreams. I believe Lidarians have it right. The Plurna too has a... An, a rule. An actual physical place. And that both of them are meaningful. So think not of this existence, if we were to be right, as one that is less important. It's, it's not even a matter of... I mean, I, I suppose I am questioning my own reality a little bit, so there is that. But... Even just knowing for how many hundreds of years we suffered not not entirely but definitely impacted because we cannot speak to the gods as they did and for it to all just be something we didn't understand understand I'm, I'm sure you understand why I'm so uh, fixated on this right now all things considered it is an earth shattering uh, revelation it calls into question many things the war affected me as much as it has affected anyone else the last one and all the ones before that uh, does it really matter why they happened no no explanation would be good enough none of that violence was ever justified regardless of what we may or may not be discovering right now it's always unfair it was always wrong. I don't suppose we'll understand the full implications of what this might mean until we learn more. As I said, should you find yourself wanting to venture to those ruins, I would like to accompany you. I would be delighted to have your company. Now, oh, ah, uh, Professor, this door, uh, I hope that it is fixed as uh, you said that, that it could be. It hasn't I worked in months. I've tried many times. Are in leads you upstairs um, on a floor that is for the most part just unfurbished entirely there is a very large square room with uh, a single door right in the middle that isn't built into a wall doesn't seemingly just doesn't lead anywhere the mechanical bird is standing on top of it Kind of like sitting down, but the moment you step into the room, it uh, the bird stands and flaps its wings. Um, Arian leads the group, goes up to the the door, <clears throat> opens it, and on the other side, 
you are greeted with the interior of Nowhere Tower. Arin pauses for a second and says, Well, would you look at that? And walks through. Wait, uh... What? I, I thought this is supposed to go to, uh... No, I'm just going to trust the process. This is okay. I, th I think it's like a, a foyer situation. We have to go through one door, then go out a different door. I see. Yep, I'll follow through. <coughs> Oop, oh, oh. Would you like to see the map again? Ha! <laughs> Greek will no, never would. get to meet his mom. I don't even remember where I put. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it's... oh, I know uh, where I put it. Is Pip still holding Jamil's staff? Yep. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> shit! You know what? Or I would have asked. The, like... <laughs> Go on, take a moment. <laughs> <laughs> you don't even think about it. But like, yeah, Aaron didn't comment on anything. You know, <laughs> no. just chilling. Just, it was just I been it was holding it this whole it. time. Yeah, that's <laughs> fine. Where he's like acting really confident with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. It's supposed to did be I there. Did I put it here? No, I didn't put it here. Uh, go back. Did I put it here? Uh, is that it? Is that it? I found it. I oh, need to move. Labels. Yeah, I need to. I need to move. Wow. The tower. <laughs> the is just there forever. Yeah, the Torterra yep. is now part of. Uh, Okay. I see that eraser. <laughs> Do I still have... No, no, no. <laughs> I need to move him. Hey. Oh, it's been so long since we've heard this music. It has yeah. been a long time. Where did I put Orm Tinhart? I found him. I can clear his thing. Hold on a second. Yeah. Um, Orm is waiting for you when you all step in, and you come through, um, it's this one. You come through this door. Oop. Door Terra. <laughs> Sorry, I actually can't erase more of him. It won't let me. I erased as much as I could. We'll get Aww. it someday. Yeah, I think, like, like, the map is blocked. Yeah, yeah probably. All right, that's fine. Um, Mr. Stark Orm, Metal feels good. The the bird flies through. Uh, Arian steps through. Uh, looks like Orm was waiting for you guys, but when like Arian steps in, he Orm has a very visible reaction to this. He just immediately points his finger and says, "Who are you?" Hmm. Oh, e you guys are with him, and then. Point uh, and then like uh, the the bird flies onto his shoulder, um, and he's like obviously like a little suspicious of Arin. Sorry, that's the only survivor. <laughs> oh, <laughs> my machines! Yeah. I was afraid of that. They tried to fight a dragon. You saw it all, right? I thought you'd have time to process. I, <laughs> I'm not constantly watching what you're doing. You didn't look over the last, like, two weeks to see that they weren't around? I was hoping you had to park them somewhere. <laughs> Dude, where's my construct? Okay, well, I can see you fixed one of my, one of the doors. Oh. And the big hatted gentleman is Hey, this is uh Aaron Moyer, this is Telex's father. Do you not Oh and then Ari immediately says I I know. And Orm says, Oh, yeah. Sorry about what happened. <clears throat> and who is she? Like, now pointing at Sunny, who, like, waves a hand and says, Hi, I know you, you don't know me, I'm Sunny. <laughs> it's like Brooke, but woman. 
<laughs> I can see that. This uh, man is like Talix, but dead. That one is like Rook, but woman. <laughs> no one. <laughs> it's not wrong. I am way stronger than Brook, though. That's what I said. Yeah, it's an improved version. <laughs> improved version. Okay. Anyway, um, Oren is briefly like looking around the, the various doors, and he he seems familiar with this place. Uh, he immediately walks up to a set of doors, and he says, uh, "Here." And he steps in front of these ones. Gives him a push, and... Well, they don't open. Oh, Is that it? Oh wait, I got it wrong! It's this one! Hey! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Sorry! I was looking at the thing that, that this is the correct one. Boom, okay, there we go. The voice. Okay, and he gives them a push and they don't open. And then he like looks towards uh, uh, Tenhart with like the bird on his shoulder and he says, um, Can you unlock this one? And Tenhart just gives a shrug and says, Well, I've tried. Uh, there was a password for this one. Uh, Tenhart says, Somebody yelled at me, asked for a password, and didn't have anything. Arin seems just perplexed by this. I didn't know there was a password. Well, I've never been through here on my own. Jamil took me once. Just one time. Oh. So we're not going to see my parents. I... Apologize, Professor. This combat music is appropriate because oh. I'm ready to fling fireballs. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> Professor. We'll just have to take the long way. It's fine, it's fine. I don't feel emotion other than outrage. And I'm feeling a lot of outrage, Aaron. What the fuck? It's not his fault. It is entirely his fault. You got my <laughs> hopes up. Don't give me hope. Do you, would you even know the password even if we could get the door open? But the password is probably my face. Oh. Or like, I don't know, open the door. Or like, move. Or fireball. <laughs> Try please. Nah, if it's my parents, then they made me. And if it's from me, they please wouldn't be the word. Well, it's okay. Hey, let's look on the bright side. There are other things that we've got to do. No, the other uh, side of that door is the bright side. Remember, that's where the light was. Oh, yeah. So I would love to look at the bright side. Unfortunately, I'm over here on the dim side. <laughs> well, I think that there is a door that leads to nearby it, though. It's like, uh, hold on. Let me look at the tooltips. <laughs> <laughs> Which one goes to the desert? This one. Uh, it was yep, it. that's the Go one. The bars. This one gets pretty close, I think. How, how do we know? How do oh, we know? Because we know where this door leads, because Aaron knows where this door leads. Obviously. Jamil and I went through this a handful of times. It is close to a group, uh, um, a town of Yavelsi. It leads to the canyon that the majority of them live in. I suppose well, it would get us there closer. Is where the water came out of and where Talix is. Hmm. Arin, like, does spend a few seconds looking at it from just a small distance. Does that one open? You know, just throws his hands in the air and says, 
I haven't tried in a while because it floods everything. It fills the tower and there are demons. So, or, sorry, devils. It seems like a terrible idea. Um, don't it's... try it. It seems to lead to literally in the ocean, like underwater, and it puts approximately an ocean's amount of water into the tower. And even if it were to work, you would just drown. No reason to touch it. I put a padlock on it. Arin's expression just remains unchanged. And he turns to face this door. And says... Outside of the one that would take us uh, straight on top of the mountain. I do believe this would be... This would take us the closest. Some of these I've never been through. So if there is anyone, any other door that would take us even closer, I'm not aware of them. Well, if this is the one we know... And it, I mean, it's a desert, so I'm not exactly excited for it, but... If it gets us to them... Uh, actually, the desert is that one. Any gestures here? Huh? What? Uh, huh? This takes us to a canyon. This takes us to a desert on the um, the other part of Ladaria, all the way on the eastern side. Oh, Pegaland. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's level 17, 18. <laughs> that's too far. Wait till There's I have wish, then we do that. <laughs> sands of all kinds of colors to there. It's, well, it's a beautiful sight. Open. <laughs> <laughs> Door is not operational. I'm sorry, Tekka. This is a weird one. It's just kind of floating and has a face on it. Uh, it's really that is that is that is in game stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's at, if there's such a thing as a door to a boss room, it's the one that's <laughs> flying with a face on it. <laughs> Ominous floating door. The rest of these are just doors. That is just a stone slab Doesn't with a face. Doesn't even have a handle. Flying. <laughs> it just opens your mouth and you crawl in. <laughs> it beckons. Well, that's all right. We got stuff to do in the canyon. Virian's got to meet uh, a, a person there. And then we gotta fight a witch under the mountain. Or we could go over the mountain first, Pontifex, and meet your parents. Uh, uh, yes? Yeah. I mean, I, I have my own personal uh, reasons why I, I obviously I want to... Uh, see, my parents who uh, abandoned me hundreds and hundreds of years ago, above, but uh, it, it goes, it is worth mentioning that if they had the prism of the Lord of Disguise, they're not just normal people. And if they were to leave it with the baby, it means that they, it <laughs> isn't a critical piece for them. The point is, my mother and father are likely incredibly powerful and knowledgeable. And likely immortal. So I didn't traveling. mishear you earlier. Your prism, it comes from a dragon from Ladari. Correct. The Lord of Disguise is like the, the king of the dragons. Apparently he has, uh, he has cried a total of five times. And my prism is one of those. I see why this would be so unusual. You're far over 400 years old, if I recall. Correct. Indeed, this makes no sense whatsoever. Correct. Well then, when we scale that mountain, I'll be by your side. I would also like to learn the answer to this uh, impossible riddle. Yeah, 
Okay, I want to find out how how they are, where they are, and when they are, and also. But I don't know. They they must have be, the prism is Lord of the Skies, the Ladarian Crystal Dragon from over 400 years ago, which means that they 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 were here that long ago, so they would know things that no one would have any idea about. And I want to know it all. And for people that are possibly that significant to be also entirely unknown is uh, concerning. We are dealing with incredible questions today. We're, if we were to find the answers to any of these, we could change everything we know about dreams, about elves, about Ladari and its discovery, about gods. Even the fate of the Seed of Akanath is in our hands. We need to get to the bottom and of the this. the origin of magic. Indeed. What's We're about to change history. Between friends? <laughs> <laughs> and then... We're about to start writing new history. I... And then, like, Orion pauses and looks at this door again for a few seconds. And then, when he steps away from it, it is just... With a certain slowness, his steps are heavy. He glances back at it one more time and then steps towards this one. Um, he lowers the handle and the, uh, the door the do open. And he... You can see into the the cave that leads into an area of just bright sunlight. He glances back towards the group and says, We have a lot of work to do. And uh, he steps through. There he is. Artifact's gonna excitedly chase after him. Well, it was nice seeing you guys. You look very busy. <laughs> I'll just... Poor, oh, I'll poor keep... Hey, 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 uh, uh, Tekka, if you find a diamond uh, as big as your head, bring it to me. <laughs> what do you need such a gem for? Mm. Awaken in Jamiro. And that is what you require? Yes, I may require all the things up the... And like he just places the little bird machine onto your staff, just <laughs> at the top of it. That so what? and I, I also have. Hold on, hold on. Don't go anywhere. He runs downstairs on his little dwarf legs. Everybody else is just pouring through the door. Um, well, I guess take a stake behind with Norm. Let's go, guys. <laughs> 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 Tinart runs back up with just a heavy, uh, heavy <coughs> breath, hands you a, like a folded piece of paper and says, I, all of these things, uh, maybe not all of them, most of them, should take me at least closer to uh, bringing him back. Or there is more to our arrival. We have found one other thing of Jamiel. It may aid you, it may not, but it was something that was close to him. And uh, it will like, kind of like wave Pip over. Yeah, Pip holds up the staff. <sighs> I recognize that thing. He's pointed at it many times in the past. He sent his namesake into that book. Something that meant so much to him. Could he have sent himself into this? Might I take a look? Yeah. You hand the stuff, the, the staff over to Orm. He gives it like some light taps with his mechanical hand, turns it around, takes a very good look at the gem. It's empty. 
the, the off is so this. Seems to be in perfect condition though. Do you want uh, uh, Want me to hold on to it? Leave it uh, next to his pod, maybe they will bring him back. Just from seeing oh. his favorite stuff. Or you I can hold on to it. I'm not, I'm not trying to take it from you. I mean, I was hoping it would help to bring him back. But it looks like you've got a whole grocery list of things that you need. It mainly comes down to fixing the pod. I have verified that his soul is in that one particular body. It's all a matter of just... Bringing him back to a weakness. It's still it is best kept here. Very well. I will uh, place it next to him. But if he points it towards me and he polymorphs me into a toad again, I will blame you too. I'll just polymorph him back. I appreciate it. Okay, well, you're obviously very busy. I don't mean to keep you from... Um... Gotta go. Yeah. Bye. <laughs> I'll be here. Fixing doors. <laughs> Good luck. We appreciate all that you do, or even with how difficult your history with Jamil has been. Thank you, Becca. Until next time. In order to watch as you go, and Tekka, you're the last person to move through this magical exit. And all of you, some of you for the first time, find yourselves uh, at the very, very end of a dark cave that is dug into this... Uh, you went from an underground cave in just normal black-gray stone into one that is uh, much more in vivid red color. And as you make your way out of the cave, you're eventually uh, welcomed by the sight of a massive canyon that extends to your right and to your left. Uh, you're like, you're coming out from one side of it, and so you're just staring down at, uh, at the bottom that is many, many feet away from you. And uh, we're going to end the session there. So the next time you can, well, do you plan to explore the canyon, do uh, Virion's thing, or do you want to go straight for the mountain? We can't do Virion's thing. We can't do Virion's thing? I'm not going to be here after this. Like, come on. Ah! <laughs> oh. Straight for the mountain, then. Straight off to the mountain. Straight for the mountain. <laughs> uh, we, we skip by all the fun Yavelsi yeah. stuff. We I, mean, I guess you can do Virion's thing, but you know. No, we can't do yeah. that without you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back. Yeah. Um, what I what I what I meant is that like, you know, you're not gonna find uh, him next session. Like there will be a whole journey. So in, in theory, I could like time it so that by the time they arrive, you'd, you'd be back. But the, yeah, that's that doesn't have to be the case. Yeah. Yeah. You can just, I yeah. mean, there's a door that leads right to the canyon, so like you guys right, can right, right. comfortably come All back. All right, team, we ignore everything. No one speak to each other. We <laughs> head down. Streamline straight to the mountain. <laughs> now we can RP us walking for a day, not speaking, or we can just segue it for however long it needs to be. And we like to pick up at the doorstep. We're riding cars all the way there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure as long as we avoid every animal, possible we should be fine and not get distracted but animals <laughs> seem to be doing the thing for us i can i can summon extra cows so if there's ever a monster we just send a cow off as like a sacrifice and we just keep oh going god i just had no animals <laughs> so i actually hadn't thought you would want to you would like like it makes sense now that it happened but i wasn't originally planning for Arian to go 
come go with you like anywhere. <laughs> yeah, this so, is nice. Um, I yeah, I'd like to like give him the deal, sunny. So I'd like to give him the sunny treatment and like give the stat block to one of you guys to handle during combat. Um, yep. Matt, you'd be my first choice since your yep. partner's connections. Is that okay? Yeah, give me, give me. Yeah. Okay, yeah, I shall. Here's your horse back. We left them in, in the... <laughs> we left our Oh horses. shit, you did leave me horses. <laughs> we'll come back for them someday. <laughs> Farum! <laughs> oh, oh my about. old friend! Farum Vasakir <laughs> al-Haram! Meet your new friend! Seraf is Val Uraim al Yalemi. <laughs> and your new friends, the Ezen, who will be taking care of you until we decide to come back. <laughs> Did we just like leave them somewhere randomly, or did we actually leave them with someone? We left them outside the castle. <laughs> <laughs> we just left. Yeah, the, we're gonna find like a random traveling Ezen just riding for room one day. <laughs> uh, is Duchess there too? Yeah. Would you have wanted to go back for them before going through the door? Because we can do that. That's Probably. fine. Probably. Yeah, that's okay. <laughs> You took the horses. I mentioned yeah. previously. Oh, yeah, by the like... way, here's your kid's horse, by the way, that he was like really <laughs> attached to. Oh. 25 minutes trying to get the horses up the stairs. Yeah. Well, and now Pontifact has a newfound love and appreciation for his little animal friends. So this is a this is a hug and pet for room moment because <laughs> goddamn, it would have been convenient if he had for room when he was chasing down the party <laughs> instead of hobbling through the woods forever. There. I just picture this whole sequence of indeed trying to bring the horses all the way up to the sixth floor of the tower. It happened, it was funny, it was just never televised. But you can have your horse last time. Like, they really you need to make this hours more. down like, and then back up six flights of stairs, you're insane. Uh, Pontifex, he blew a hole in the side of the glass building anyway, so he would have literally just jumped out the window and slow fell down to the horse there and then rode the horse back up. There was a hole in the floor Epic. that are in question. Yeah, there you go. To get back down to get the horse, he hit Pontifex and another brave soul can just dive out the side of the building. And then get feather felled. Ugh. And then, yeah, <sighs> horses climbing stairs. Glass stairs. Yeah. <laughs> the, the... The sound. The, yeah, the sound. What do, what do, why am I forgetting the word? What are what the irons on a... Horseshoes. Thank you. Like, just the horseshoes scraping against the glass. Fun. Yeah. Great session. So much information. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like, I yeah, had to be prepared awesome. for after talking to Arin, but like, we just <laughs> talked to Arin the whole time. <laughs> I'm glad you had fun. Yeah, no kidding. I don't even think we scratched half the questions we had. No. Oh, yeah, no, I have a list. So much more. <laughs> like, I made my own list of things that Arin would know and would be able to talk about. We haven't touched half of them. Yeah. It's a good thing he's coming with us. Yeah. Yeah. Yep, exactly. There's so <laughs> much. So much. Poor Arin. <laughs> okay. Aaron, Very quick, well. is the tree theory legit? <laughs> yes. Which tree one? Theory. Quick, Aaron, look at our, our conspiracy board. Hey, people, <laughs> show them the board. Oh, God. How much of this is accurate? Uh, and I don't understand that. Absolute any of it. chaos with strings uh, everywhere. I made this at witching hour. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're going to stop the stream now. <laughs> Bye stream. Okay. I, I hope you had... Well, I hope everybody had fun. And sure. uh, Jory, we're not going to see you for so long. Two months. Mm -hmm. I, Two months. I, we shall be stacking dice on your desk next. On your side of the table. You better Every be. Day, are you not here? Are we able to do that? I did. Nobody yeah. stacks like Jory. Oh. I mean, I stacked it back. No one stacks oh. like Gaston. <laughs> Hides up dice like Gaston. Which, which means it's now Matt's job to stack dice on my side of the table. So you're just yeah. going to have a pile of dice. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'll take it. A mound of them. dice. 
went through. I need a bowl on on Jory's <laughs> side of the table that I can just add dice to. There you go. <laughs> just a little thing to make into existence. Don't don't go too far. Go too oh far. Oh boy. Bowl. Bowl. Oh, no, it goes too far. Oh. Maybe make it oh. Now we hide the dice under the oh! ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even we're gone easy. yet. We're easily entertained. <laughs> we, we are. All right. Gonna end the stream now. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.